Like I said, uh, today is going to be a fun day. Uh, we're going to do some geoengineering talk. We're going to talk some climate stuff and uh, go open panel from there. Um, like I said, uh, probably for the next few weeks, I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of these. Uh, so if you don't enjoy the geoengineering, climate change, global warming talk, uh, peace. Um, but realistically to me, as far as I'm concerned, and all of you guys should be concerned, um, this is a much bigger issue than said shape so um i'm going to be doing this i do like the fact that uh the there is quite a few streams i'm gonna say i'll we'll say a few for right now a uh, few streams i have been having this uh same discussion or idea of discussion um about you know leaving the said topic um of flat earth in the you know in the dust because again um maybe it's because i was a flat earther that i stayed longer maybe it's because i was a flat earther that i that i it's i'm getting over it i don't know but hey whatever um but like i said even then i weather modification geoengineering that shit matters that shit is so so much more interesting um especially when we're talking under the guides of uh our safety our futures our children etc um so we're gonna be doing that um again like i said last stream these are not going to be long-winded uh hour two hour long uh presentations of what i want to talk about i just want to start giving you guys more of the what i'm researching what i'm seeing why i come to the conclusions i do and then that way we'll uh we'll, we'll be able to um figure some stuff out or maybe uh help me figure things out because like i said um last stream i i do openly come come at geoengineering with a bias um i did look at the negatives way before the positives i do know the positives um but i'm in the realm of if it doesn't outweigh the risk then it, it's not it's not ethic it's not ethical bull ethical blah 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 shouldn't do it there you go <laughs> Okay, so um, so like like, like I said, uh, let me go ahead and get in the chat and see what's up to you guys uh, for being here. What's up, Sean? Uh, what's up, RT? What's up, Blue Marble? How you doing, sir? 
What's up, Gen League Channel? No name, how you doing? GPS in the house. And that is it. Uh, all right, so like I said, um, very quick, you guys, what's up, Montreal? Like I said, um, one of the main things that I, uh, I, I, or better yet, in the geoengineering talk, the main geoengineering application that I personally uh, look into the most is solar radiation management. Here's a kicker. There's probably about 200 different geoengineering things they could do, I guess you would say. Um, how many of them have they actually done? I don't know. How many are they applying now? I can only guarantee I know one. Uh, and that would be the ocean fertilization. We'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, as for the solaration management, spraying sulfates into the sky, um, publicly we know of one that was planned to go and then was shut down abruptly, I think a couple days before. And that was SPICE, Project SPICE, that was out of the UK. Um, it is, it's basically the same thing as Scopex. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Scopex is, it's a Harvard geoengineering uh, research, or program, research, or research program uh, experiment that they are planning to do, or as they call it, a field experiment, or field study. Um, to spray aerosol sulfates into the sky, into the stratosphere, um, and to test the particles with the, how they work. Overall, the main idea of this study will be to have a large-scale geoengineering uh, to mitigate the global warming uh, information that we're getting uh, of one point, or the rise of 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, Basically, let me sum this up right away. So what they will do is they will load up these large, um, from what I'm hearing, they're DC-10s, um, to we'll load them up with tanks of aerosol sulfates, uh, particle size unknown at the moment. And what they will do is they will spray until the entire Earth is covered in this aerosol sulfate that will last days or months as long as it needs but it, it will need to be uniform it will need to be everywhere and it won't be it's not a situation where the united states can do it and mexico canada africa for that matter doesn't matter because what will end up happening and the reasoning for the risk of this is that we know you can't uniformly spray aerosols and cover the whole damn globe at once so what ends up happening is you're going to have patches you're going to have sections that are getting done that will last longer than the others or be uh maintained as others are being um the grids are being made and, and filled um so what ends up happening will be uh imagine a, a, a hazy cloudy day not cloudy to the point where it's like you know that you can see the details of clouds imagine like a full gray like it just looks gray hazy white that will be our skies it will no longer be blue um i know i know this sounds like one of those conspiracy things but this is so 100 percent uh real that i'm gonna go ahead and pop pull this up onto screen my favorite website Okay, so this is how real, for those of you who don't know the topic at hand, um, it's this one. Actually, I'm going to use the panel because it's already set up. Okay, so for instance, all right, let me switch. There it is. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the, the university that is doing the project. Um, again, like I said, it's called um, it's Scopex. It is a it is their geoengineering project or program that they have. Um, basically, their plan, what Harvard is doing as we speak, um, is in the works, is to do this the Scopex test, which I was just explaining, where they will use a balloon, a stratospheric balloon, to spray um, a small bit, a small amounts of this. Uh, 
aerosol sulfates just to see how um, the atmosphere and the stratosphere reacts to the particles that they use in the sky. Um, they're, they're uh, what do you call it? The, um, they're, 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 the safety of it, is how, as, they, they, as they say it, is basically under the guides that um, no matter what, the sulfates, because being sprayed in the, in the stratosphere, will not ever reach land. Ever, you know, reach us. And to me, that seems kind of, uh, you know, kind of, to me personally, it's kind of fact of the matter. Because, um, again, it will reach the ground. And here's why. If they use sul the particles that are extremely, and they make them extremely small, those won't it won't make it here. It won't make it down to us. That's that's the crux of it. Um, but if they make those particles too large, they become heavy, and they will reach Earth. Um, and yes, that's not a good thing. Here's another bad thing: that aerosol sulfates that they plan on using, they know that it will damage the ozone layer. Why is it not matter? They honestly feel that if they get the particle size right, it won't. Again, even using the climate models that they use to, to, to predict certain um, situations, everything that they use does one of two things. One, it outlines that it's a very risky thing, and it, it, just, blur, it just redlines every bad thing that could happen. And it, trust me, it far outweighs the good. The second uh, choice they get out of this situation is this. Add another 50 years to it. At that point, less risk. But the risks that they do have, ooh, man, we're talking uh, ma like catastrophic massive uh, loss of life. Yeah, so that's how situ the situation goes. And I'm going to, um, over the time, I'm going to start showing those models. Um, the reason I haven't so far is because they are just papers. Um, and even just me explaining them doesn't give them justice. Um, so what I'm looking for is um, I found one. There's certain sites for these universities that actually will post the models that they have and show you the projections over, uh, I think it's the one I have now is over a 15 year period. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to be showing those pretty, uh, probably sometime this week, I hope. Um, just trying to get them ready and set up on the OBS. But uh, yeah, so like I was saying, to those who believe that I am talking conspiracy, this is ScopeX. This is the Harvard's website. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the explanation for what ScopeX is. Uh, stratospheric controlled, per, or per, 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 or, ah, blah, 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 experiment. So basically... Like I said, um, what they're doing, this isn't the large scale geoengineering project that they're talking about as we speak. Um, this is, they're, right now what they're gonna do is they're, they're gonna be explaining basically uh, what they're going to do. Um, and, and I'm going to show you basically why I'm doing this again, because I know a lot of you guys have heard who this Scopex, what Scopex is, who Harvard, uh, David Keith is. Um, and I, I see some of you guys in the chat um, questioning, asking questions, but uh, let me get to this and I will get back to it. Actually, I have it stopped. So the chat stopped. So that way I will get to all of your questions if you guys have them. Um, but like I said, um, the, the, the main crux of this, to blanket, to block out the sun's UV rays, radiation, um, ultimately to then cool the planet. You know, basically, if the sun's beating on you and you put something, a hat on, less heat, less sun, less heat, you cool down. Kind of the crux and the guides of where this comes from. Um, but it's not that simple. Um, just so everyone knows, they got this idea, this test. Well, let me, let me say this. In quotes, this idea of solar radiation management was started being a, a topic of interest when, in 1991 when Mount Pinatuba erupted, causing its own little geoengineering fiasco. Um, actually, it wasn't even a fiasco. It was actually pretty good. We, uh, 
we didn't lose two we gained two inches of water level and we cool the planet cooled down i think it was 0.5 degrees celsius so in that sense that's why they saw it and that's why they liked it um the problem is is that they don't tell you at all that when a volcano erupts and does this uh when it's the it's plume it's smoke it's exhaust whatever you want to call it uh spills into the atmosphere it's a lot of carbon monoxide not good for us two um yeah it, it can actually be much worse than and than 91's Pinatuba like it could actually warm the planet how well if you're hot and you put a blanket on you overheat well guess what could happen here not to mention if we're talking about this blanketing the earth so that the UV rays can't get in or the radiation can't get in how are the emissions that we have now going to get out because whether you believe in space or not the emissions that we do have the gases that are in our atmospheres, at some point they mitigate and they, they disperse into space. But if we're, if we're blanketing every, the atmosphere, there's no way to release. Ah, whoa, hence carbon capture. Hmm, makes that a lot more money worthy if you're uh, getting paid to capture it, right? I know, we're not going to go into that right now. Again, uh, I know everyone here has probably heard all that, so uh, I won't, I won't beat your ears with that uh, scam. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start talking about, I want to talk about more of these uh, documents and, and, um, and, and reports that are coming out as we speak to yesterday, today, the day before that are talking about geoengineering, solar radiation management, scope X for in general. Um, more importantly, who funds these things? Because in my opinion, I always thought um, that the government funded it so that way it was, you know, it's part of their, their uh, initiative of what needs to get done. And more importantly, that it stay, it, it has, um, I guess the best way I'm going to say is policing. A, a policy that ensures that uh, treaties and laws are, are, are met, right? And uh, nope, matter of fact, the, the, the majority of the money that goes to funding geoengineering actually comes from private investors. Hedge funds, Bill Gates, um, and there's a few other. Um, majority of it is uh, there are 29 investors that actually invest in a lot of these projects. Uh, Bill Gates being number 30, but does not classify himself into that group. He does not attend their meetings and all that stuff. But yeah, billions are put into geoengineering research um, for whatever reason. You know, there because there's a lot of different reasons. Like I said, there there are over there are hundreds of these ideas for geoengineering and, and solutions for global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it. Um, but like I said, Scopex is the, uh, is on the, is the big one that everyone's looking at right now. Um, there's actually a couple other ones that, uh, I actually, I would have to find cause I wasn't going to pull them up. But, um, like I said, yeah, it's, it's not, this isn't Tim trails conspiracy talk. This is real. This is going to happen. The idea for, like I said, they're doing, this is a field study. Uh, supposedly the first of its kind, in my opinion, the first publicly. But um, what they will do with those results will then go to legislation. Legislation will then pass a, uh, a I guess, a law or a reprimand. I, I don't even know what you call it, to be honest with you guys. Uh, it would basically say um, that because of the situation with climate, United America is giving permission an allowance for these ge that for geoengineering to happen over it or you know over its, its airspace in guides to then motivate other countries to to allow it to happen there um we'll go into the policing of it we'll go into the policies we'll go into the what if your next door neighbor doesn't want to do geoengineering what will happen we'll go into that in the next one uh but let's go i want to kind of just get through some of these documents so that way we can uh can open the panel and we can shoot the shit about this or uh change the subject it's up to you guys i mean like i said i the reason i do this the way i do it is uh, that way uh once once i'm done ranting if it's not your cup of tea we can go somewhere else so like i said um one of the first documents that i wanted to share with you guys is um and i'm pretty sure you guys have seen this 
again, Bill Gates, Pfizer. Um, Bill Gates, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know this, Bill Gates has been, um, has really been a, 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 one of the head for, of the forefront on independent public investors, I guess you would call it. But yeah, um, it, it's one of those things. And here's the crazy part. This is kind of where I wanted to get at with this. Um, so Pfizer is uh, is basically, it's not, it's Bill Gates's, uh, like his little spiel thing where he, he likes to go around talking about why he's doing this, why he's doing that. And uh, one of the, the biggest red flags to me wasn't even that he put so much into geoengineering. It's all the other investing investments that he's made, like uh, shipping babies. Uh, it's like a, a, a some kind of tablet that vaccinates your child through you know through the first ten years. It's kind of weird. I don't know, but uh, I don't like it. Uh, but like I said, one of the biggest things that was a red flag to me. If you are a billionaire and you're trying to invest in, in geoengineering and it's in the capabilities of other, of other aspects of technology, wouldn't you want a, a website, something that explains what Pfizer is? Because there is, if you find one, let me know because there's not. Um, but like I said, that, that's, that's definitely my biased view on it. Um, just wanted to get you guys an idea, of, you know, where that comes from and why I was talking about Bill Gates. Um, oh, so when we're talking uh, what they'll be using, what they have as technology, um, again, I, I've had to correct, you know, uh, uh, lovers, and I've had to, to explain to flat earthers uh, where the whole idea of satellite and... Um, Satellite and uh, other technologies being used using balloons rather than you know satellites in space. Um, the capabilities of these things, um, yes, they do. They do use these as alternative satellite. Um, world, you know, uh, Olympics. They use an alternative satellite to keep phone si signals and receptions good. Um, televised. They use them to you know as a, a trace, I guess you would call it. I'm not really sure, but they, they definitely used them over the Olympics in China. Um, now again, their area is not large enough to, to be worth a shit. They're a lot cheaper than satellites, but you'd need a thousand more per satellite. So, you know, um, but the reason I wanted to show this is cause this is actually, um, I, I showed you guys Raven air or Raven Aerostar a few times. It's the, a company that their Scopex is working with that actually um, is mass is one of the biggest producers of these strato balloons. Um, well, they're going to be using one of uh, Raven Aerospace's brand, 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 brand new uh, creations, and I'll show you guys that what that is right now. There it goes. And again, I mean, you guys are kind of looking at it now, but I want you guys to be able to see exactly what we're looking at. So there it is. That's going to be our, uh, basically the, the one that the study is based on this technology. Um, so what we're looking at right now is what they're calling the Strato Cruiser. Uh, it's a Strato Cruiser flight system. It says it's a, uh, a new horizon for aerophysics, planetary science, and Heliophysics and Earth science. Um, it says the long duration observing platforms operating in the lower stratosphere at altitudes of 65. I don't even know what the hell is six, What is KFT? That's so weird. I've never heard that. Um, 20 kilometers would, would provide critical, uh, critically needed scientific breakthroughs in both the space sciences and the Earth sciences. The Strato Cruiser uh, propulsion module offers unprecedented er, mobility and measured measurement capability, combining the 
precision, precision of balloon platforms for the great for the greatly extended observing times stations keeping over the central u.s in july and august and recovering recovery of the experiment following the system deployment so they've already flown it blah blah, blah tested it um let's go down to the specs of this thing okay so it says uh says the stratus the stratus cruiser long duration let me move my mic so i can read well my head all tilted funny ah thank you thank you monobrot uh so kft equals thousands thousands of feet is that what that means thousands of feet ah kilo feet thank you brian i appreciate that thank you okay so like i said um the strato cruiser long duration observ observing system presented oh, i'm not even at the right part here we go sorry Okay, so it, the advantages of the Strato Cruiser are uh, the use of a long duration super pressure balloon technology for flight durations of six weeks in the stratosphere at altitudes of 20 kilometer, capable of sustaining a payload of 2,000 kilograms on the mo modest 1 million, okay, some other technology, or larger payloads with increased balloon volume. A stratospheric, uh, number two, a stratospheric solar electric propulsion system for horizontal navigation in station keeping, in, in keeping the station in, stratos in the stratosphere that provides drive velocities up to eight, eight meters a second for one meter. Uh, one meter foot cubed balloon volume, I guess. Uh, number three, a reel down system providing in in suit observations over an altitude range of 10 kilometers below the okay so okay so the uh the module that's under the balloon which is what you're looking at now that it can hang from the balloon it's saying 10 kilometers i'll reread it a reel down system providing an in suit obser observations over an altitude range of 10 kilometers below the balloon float altitude of 20 kilometers. Number four, recon, recon, uh, recon, recognition, recognition, damn, an engagement of the unique anti cyclonic flow in the lower stratosphere over the US in summer that provides to this point unrecognized opportunities for a long duration flight of balloons platforms over the US. Don't really understand what they were saying. Okay, I see. So basically, over the summertime, uh, over the U.S., there is a anti-cyclonic flow in the lower strat. So I guess it's a jet stream rises. Um, what else is in this that you guys should know about? I think that's it for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and share the website because, like I said, I'm not gonna read through all these sites, all these websites. I just wanted to give you guys a just and where to look and how. I come to the conclusions I am. So this is the website that we're looking at right now. Um, again, this is uh, what Scope X will be using. Harvard University will be using. So that's that. Um, and for another look, so you guys can have another look at what we're looking at. Uh, this is this is their basically their presentation of what it will do in all. Yeah, so um, let me see here. There's one more I wanted to go through. I said, guys, it's not going to be very too long at all. Oh, where are you? I right, don't need scope X. Don't need this one. Oh, okay, I'll show you this while I got to get one of these websites ready. Basically, I pop it up and everything like that. So, um, in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys this. This is um, this is the website that I, I'm getting those models I was telling you about. This is where I'm getting them from. Let me go ahead and share it. There we go. And I'll go ahead and share this link as well, so you guys can uh, go here if you guys want to check those out. Again, these are the uh, 
this is one of the hundreds of geoengineering um, model uh, sim or simulated model um, that they use to predict what will happen. So you guys can check this out. And there's a lot of uh, publication, public, public, publicized um, descriptions and journals on these certain models. So you have to kind of go into it. But uh, it's definitely a good read. Definitely, if you want to understand um, what they're looking for in these models, these are very descriptive on how that works. Um, all right, and here we go. So this is the website I want to talk about. Again, yes, yes, it is. One of those conspiracy websites again i don't use these as my evidence at all i do use them as my starting point and they are great for that so let's go into this and then uh kind of see where we're at it says list of list of geoengineering experiments and who funds them who funds them that's the obvious main topic of this uh this stream the reason being because i feel that one of the reasons that the government issues grants and and uh, certain things are limited to who can invest in them, uh, it's very clear to me that in this situation, the government won't be policing any of this. Um, you would ask, okay, well, what about treaties that govern, you know, the the for or forbid geoengineering or the study of you know, actually field studies. And the, the problem would be the best one we have right now for this situation is called the bio, the, the biodiversity uh, protocol or treaty, something else, but it's the biodiversity uh, as well. It's, okay. Here it is. Bio biodiversity commission. Basically that is the one that says no geoengineering, no geoengineering studies. And the main reason, because there's not enough research, and or knowledge of the risk and what will happen doing so and that's what the studies end with the uh actual projects themselves um one of those being ocean fertilization which brings me to the issue at hand ocean fertilization guys is uh basically dumping iron into the ocean to to excite to Blow, make the, the algae the algae bloom is what they call it um, you know algae well this makes the, the population explode the reason is is because the algae it, it kind of mitigate it, they made it kind of keep themselves at a certain range towards the top of the um, surface of the I forget what's called but it's the light area so where Sun is actually able to reach is where these algae blooms are um, well the iron excites them makes them blow up makes them um populate in the millions well there's a problem with this because or but yeah i'm sorry i kind of jumped around on that one the reason they're doing this is because the, the algae that we have naturally on a natural basis what they do is they actually they actually absorb the co2 that that the water absorbs so basically you know co2 is in the air where it does actually sequester itself into the water um, I think it's about 25% actually makes it to the water. Um, well, the algae, they, they, they absorb it. And when they die, they basically sink to the bottom. There's the idea of carbon sequestration, storage of carbon dioxide. Um, the problem is with the ocean fertilization is, is once these algae have bloom, there's something that is called red tide. Pretty sure you guys know what red tide is. I mean pretty sure I've shown you guys so many damn times it's crazy um, while I'm talking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up for you guys but basically uh, what happens is a red tide is basically the algae's way of population control if there's too many it, there's less food they know it red tide well red tides kill off a large po uh, proportion of those those algae blooms and they also make the water more acid. Oh, I got it. I think I got it. They make the water more or become more acidification. Damn, see, fucked it up. So the pH levels in the <laughs> pH levels in the ocean rise dramatically um, because of these red tides. The Dead Sea became the Dead Sea in most cases because of red tide situations. 
we there are pockets of places in the ocean that have no life because of these red tides and the acid level and the pH levels in the ocean because of situations. Um, I saw in the chat earlier, acidity. Thank you. Um, I saw you said something earlier, digital. I think about uh, whales. I wanted to comment on that because I, I it's not exactly how you said, but it is true. Let me see. I'm trying to scroll up right now. All right, where did you say it? And then that way I can also get to some of these questions and comments that are in here. Uh, ooh, okay, no, I'm sorry. It was, we need critical thinking. And I do appreciate that. I'm going to check out that link. I actually got it popped up right now. So, um, oh, there it goes. So uh, we, need to criti we need critical thinking. Oh, no, I don't want to leave YouTube. The hell? Hang on, I don't know why. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so like I said, um, I will touch on this, and maybe I'll be right, and we'll see. So you, someone says, um, if you haven't already, says whales keep carbon out of the atmosphere, and I haven't read this article yet, mind you. The reason for this is. Um, because whales, majority, eat the algae, ultimately sequestering carbon dioxide. Pretty cool, right? Um, we need critical thinking. I'm pretty sure that's what the article is going to say. Um, for those who didn't see his link and would like to read up on that, here you go. There's a link to what you're looking at now on the screen. Appreciate that uh, we need critical thinking. Okay, I'm gonna go through the chat real quick, guys. So if you have any questions, I'll go get to them right now. Remember, you need to tag. Uh, 4044 says, did you know they haven't managed sh shutter that highest and hardest class ceiling? Sh oh, they haven't managed to shatter. There, there's, there's, no there's no glass up there. Anyway, um, let me see here. Thank you for that. Uh, let me see. Okay, so basically you guys are just chatting it away. Okay, so um, one kind of wanted to get into the geo, some more of the geoengineering stuff that we'll talk about uh, ocean fertilization. But um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the panel. And then that way we can go from there. Oops, I just shared that link. Let me check Discord real quick. Digital Demonic, you were... I never thought you were in my, uh, in the bunker. You on Discord? I don't know. Well, I'll go ahead and share the link. And yes, Aaron, I see you out there. I don't care. I don't care one bit. If you want to be back on this panel, I told you what you had to do. And if you didn't hear me, that's not my fucking problem. But yeah, you're not welcome here. And I didn't decide to change those goals. Instead of just the apology. Oops, I said it. Um, you also need to... Um, Untrollify yourself because I don't like it. Not needed. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll do this then. You want you want the link, people? Get it in the bunker. Uh, I hear you, but I don't know where you are. Hang on one second. And uh, I just so everyone knows I put the link in the um, in the bunker. So anyone that comes along now is going to basically be not going to be able to see the link. So that's why. Oh, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? I didn't see the name. Let's see. Oh, what's up, Brian? How you doing, sir? There was somebody else, but I, they didn't. I guess they left. How you doing, sir? Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I do that all the time. 
Um, let me see. Yeah, so like I said, anybody who wants to jump in, just let me know. Um, what did you think about what, I was, what I've shared so far? I actually, or, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, go to your, like you have your sound settings, go to um, like, you know, where you play back, you actually set up your uh, headset or mic in the computer. There should be a level in there, and that level. I've already, should... I've already fixed it now. It's just, I don't know why. All of a sudden, my mic was turned all the way up for no reason. Ah. So it was just catching everything. But no, um, geoengineering is an area that I'm probably even weaker than I am flat Earth. So it's a, it's interesting. It's interesting material. Although I got kind of distracted with Dave Rackia in the chat. <laughs> why? Or about what? Uh, the echo satellites, of all things. He seems to think that they were balloons floated into space, or that the balloons were inflated to keep the satellite in space. <laughs> mm, Both of those are just wrong. Yeah, it's... Again, they don't go as high as space. Um, they couldn't. I think they would blow up at that point. Or oh, they um, do. The the Echo series in particular were actually um, satellites that were launched, and then a balloon was inflated on them to increase their size. Was that that tether one? It was like a. Oh no, not at all. It's a. It was an actual. Um, it was an actual launch that they were using to test uh, satellite communications with in the uh, '60s. But then, where was the balloon brought into it? Oh, the balloon was actually on the rocket itself. It was launched. And once it was in orbit, it was triggered, and the balloon would inflate. What happened to the balloon when it after inflating? Uh, nothing, because it didn't have anything to um, see to really run into it. It was just a big old balloon sitting up there um, in orbit. Well, uh, traveling thousands of miles an hour in orbit, but still. What well, I thought, I thought, like for instance, uh, when we do when people launch balloons. They, they burst at a certain altitude. Well, they do. Um, see, but that's one that's infl already inflated down at ground level. This is, a, this is just, a, uh, this just has a balloon on it that inflates once it's in space and it only inflates to a certain amount. Um, so, so that it's fully inflated at this, at the altitude that it's placed at. As long as it doesn't change altitude, it shouldn't burst. Ah, uh, okay. So it's the actual pressurizing or lack of pressurizing when it was pressured. Oh, okay, so like a, a like a bottle, like a plastic bottle when you go up and down a mountain. Yeah, like a sponge. Yeah, this thing was just inflated in space. Uh, okay. So, so I so because so it was squished. Uh huh. When it rose into the atmosphere, it expanded. Oh, that That's wasn't the premise. The satellite system. Yeah, but that that was the premise of how it inflated was because it, because it was squished at say fourteen psi. When, once it got up, once it got up and triggered, it just let go and opened up, which created the inflation. I'm not certain if that's correct, but I'll uh, sit, but I don't have anything to say otherwise. <laughs> wow, YouTube well, they only put, me do this point... weird thing now. <laughs> like it, it makes well, they... me want to leave. It's weird. But what? What? But that's it. But no, uh, red tides are. <laughs> Did we lose Sean? No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, sorry. For some reason, uh, you're showing up as another avatar of me in my screen. Really? Yeah. So whenever you speak, it tells me that I'm talking to me. Ah, that's that's weird. I know. Let's see. Really gives some credence to the idea of being a brain in a vat. Matrix is broken. <laughs> Ah, oh, God damn it! All right, uh, Aaron, thank you for the super chat and the public mm -hmm. apology to said name. Um, I, I, you're still a troll, so you'd have to lose that as well to be on my panel again. Don't super chat gets you nothing. It's not you're not getting on my panel 
because you did a super chat. You then need to not troll now. And I want to promise you're not going to troll. And you can just tag me in, 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 in the chat. You don't have to do a fucking super chat. Well, that's part of the troll mechanism is to give you money to acknowledge him. Yeah. It's a very strange mechanism. Well, I just feel it necessary to acknowledge the super chats. Doesn't mean <laughs> doesn't mean he's going to uh, win in this. It's, it's not going to be a win. You, the only way to win is if you have a chance. <laughs> yeah, it's not pay to play. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Well, Aaron, and this is for Aaron only, everyone. It costs $50 to come on my panel. I don't want you here, <laughs> so don't pay it, please. But yeah, that's if he wants to be a troll, it costs. It's gonna cost him fifty bucks to be a troll every time he comes on my panel. And don't don't drop signal or leave, because it only is one mission. <laughs> one mission for trolling. And, it's a one-time uh, deal. Yeah. Pay so, to play. See, see, he went. See, damn it, he's 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 neck and neck right now because we have taken three minutes of this stream talking about his stupid ass. So. Like I said, um, someone was saying, oh, we were talking about what Demonic was saying. Um, I, don't, I don't know how the deflated it would become inflated in that situation. Is it because the pressure it would... But see, it wouldn't... Is there like a gas in there? Was there gas in the balloon? Uh, there would be to uh, cause what's, uh, what's called a catalyst. So it has to start the process. But so, so it wouldn't just inflate because it got altitude. There would have to be something that triggered it to start. Oh, so okay, so there okay, you go. Okay. that's okay. what I'm talking. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so that it wouldn't, yeah, so it wouldn't have the effect that we were just talking about, uh, like a plastic bottle. No, no, uh, sort of like a sponge. You know how a dry sponge increases when you add water. Hmm. The, op the opposite effect happens to something when it goes up into space. Wait, so, what? Um, so you're not adding mass to it for it to get bigger. So when you add water to a sponge, you're adding mass to the sponge. Yeah. The opposite effects happens when you go into space. You're not adding mass to it. You're decreasing mass, but you're in you're you're actually enlarging. But you know, mass doesn't change. No, 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 but that, but that's what I mean. You're not increasing the mass to increase the size of it. If you, if you understand, kind of. Okay, when a person gets fat, they increase in size, wait, wait, which wait, means they wait, increase wait. in mass. Use use uh, <laughs> a soda, a soda bottle, because <laughs> like I, I I'm sorry, but that's in in the realm of how it works. I'm thinking in my head, uh, if you buy a bottle of soda at at the you know at the bottom of the mountain. And you get to the top of the mountain, the soda doesn't explode, nothing. But if you drink it up there, and then as you drop down the bottom of the mountain, it will then you start hearing it pop and crink, and as the pressure increases on it. And yeah. if you go back up the mountain, the bottle will expand again. It will go back to where it was. If you don't open it at all, and it doesn't explode. Or crack. <laughs> That's, a lot, That's a lot of ifs. That's a lot of ifs. I haven't done it. I haven't done it with the guides of what will happen. I've just done it because I drive up, I go up and down like Big Bear or something like that. And I, it's at, at 8,000 And you feet, watch your bottle crinkle I hear as it. you come back down. I hear, I hear yeah. it and it usually scares the shit out of me. And vice versa if I'm going up and I have a crinkled one. That's how I know it will reshape itself. How it will inflate. Yes. Only because of a pressure differential. Yes. See, that's why I wanted you to explain it like that. <laughs> now I get it. You know, that was actually one of the weird parts about um, going to the going to school where I went to versus where I grew up. Is um, the altitude difference was about two thousand feet difference. So where I grew up, you crack open a coke, the bubbles basically went on incessantly, versus um, being nearer to sea level where everything just always stayed in the Coke. So it was very bizarre. It took me a long time to get over how different uh, carbonated beverages are just in the difference of 2,000 feet. Oh, they get fizzier. They go flatter faster um, at a higher elevation, but the bubbles yeah. pop more often. 
So yeah, that's you, because it's trying to release the carbon faster to create the entropy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually has a noticeable difference in the way you drink it. Um, it actually almost makes it taste flat, even though, flatter um, at sea level, even though it's really not. Stupid soda. What <laughs> altitude? Um. Anyway, back to our geoengineering debate. Yes. Uh. Uh. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Some people were saying in the chat how uh more CO two is going to be good for the plants. Do they realize that CO two saturation is actually not good for plants? Yeah, it can burn out the actual um, exchange process in the C three C four pathway. And here's the here's the worst part of that that claim. Um, they can only absorb so much, and if you know pre-industrial, pre us, I could see that our CO, I can see how CO two levels wouldn't jump or you know be much. They'd probably be pretty balanced because there's not an excess of carbon dioxide being being uh, contributed to it. Now, again, like the sponge that Digital uh, Demonic was talking about just now, mm. trees can only absorb so much. And trust me, it's not fast. So, um, yeah, so trees love CO2. Plants love CO2. Yeah, you're right, 100%. And it's good for them. They love it. But they can only absorb so much. It's not like they can over CO2. It doesn't work that way. And that's kind of why um, one of the ideas that they've had was uh, afforestation, where it's the exact opposite of deforestation, where they actually will, will create a forest in a place that wasn't quite forest prior. Um, it, it, it takes too long. They don't absorb enough at, in, a, in a fast enough uh, rate that it would actually mitigate anything that's happening now. Yeah, you got to wait 30 years for a forest to grow. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And in, um, in, the, in the sense of that, it, it gets worse because with that, that the, the length of time it takes, first of all, I mean, don't get, it, don't get me wrong. Aforesta aforestation is a wonderful idea. If you're going to do it just because it's better for the environment. But if it needs to be done like they're talking, useless. Um, even worse, to actually make our situation that we're, they've put us in, to actually make it a, a, an effective um, tool, um, you're going to lose a lot of uh, crop farming. A lot. Or a lot of farming yeah. in general. Because they still need good good land the the best way to put it is um if we have to fix the problem by 2040 but you have to wait for 2050 for the solution you're gonna miss out by 10 years mm -hmm. well that was the that was probably one of the biggest eye openers to me um and and barney kind of really made it clear we and for them to publicly be talking about this now with the idea that 20, 30, 24, 2050 things need to be done or else we should have been doing that should have been out 30 years ago and and, and right now we should be in the, the, the aspect of is it going to work here's other options that we have that we've been looking over over the past 30 years they're not doing that everything they're talking and this is why I think a lot of these geoengineering um, studies are that are public is just eye candy. I, I feel that they've been doing these things. I, and I, there's a little small piece of me, a little small conspiracy guy inside my head still, who thinks the the rush of this now, the publicit, the pub, bliss, the publicity of this now, is literally because of a fuck up. Because hey, something didn't work. That's my opinion. I have no facts to actually give you for that, but but that's that's actually not quite a conspiracy. That's an opinion from what you have seen. Yeah, very true. Well, this way, yeah. I know for a fact 
there are geoengineering studies projects that are either ongoing or have been done that are said to have not been for instance uh, the biggest one the 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 biggest fuck you to the world is ocean fertilization because it was one of those um geoengineering uh things that were being done that the a lot of these treaties based it on you know because that was it was happening the the worst part is is that there's one treaty, the Biodiversity Treaty, that outlaws geoengineering ocean fertilization altogether. Then there's the Paris Agreement. <sighs> now, here's a little unknown secret about the Paris Agreement. It talks about saving, you know, greenhouse uh, or global warming and gases, emissions, and you know, and all this, ex- all everything, right? Paris Agreement. The the in the there's a paragraph in there. That states that geoengineering studies that are approved are okay. Hmm. But geoengineering is not okay, so how are they allowed to... Well, of all the geoengineerings, this is one thing I can guarantee you. Ocean fertilization is the fastest. It's very quick. When they when they yeah. do the ocean fertilization, algae blooms happen. And I mean, and anything from that point on, it's not really a factor. To, it's not a factor of is it does it work or not? Because it does work. What they do works. We know it's not up to us what you know nature does at that point, but we know pretty much what it's going to do. Well, if they're they're doing a lot of ocean fertilization, that's going against treaties, and those treaties are there for a reason. Because again, like I explained earlier. They may have found a way to sequester, uh, to store um, a, most or a lot of this carbon dioxide that hits, gets to the ocean, which then it becomes less for the, the, the air. But there's things that, again, they're not telling people that really do weigh the outcomes of whether or not it's worth it or not. So for one, we know that it creates red tides. Red tides create an asticity of the water that is deadly things die that's how you, the term dead sea it will, it will create sure. a dead sea well the dead um, sea was a full content issue and um that's it but acidity you sound far away i'm just uh trying not to speak too loud because um if i move at all my mic is still oversensitive oh okay okay go ahead um well, the Dead Sea is actually just a salt issue. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. I think there's actually a um, an area that that the river runs through that feeds in, that feeds into part of the sea that quite literally is essentially a uh, salt quarry. But I could be dead wrong there. I'd have to look that up again. Are you talking about the Dead Sea? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a yeah. Um, not all. I I, I, I may have also not it's that. the same idea of why. Um, or better yet, um, damn, what's it called? Um, the Salton Sea, that dense out uh, here in California. That's that's a salt content. That's a salt content um, uh, more than the, the acid acidity. Acidity. Yeah. That that was um. So where the Salton Sea is, there's a lot of the um rock salt, lots of rock salt, lots and lots of it. it, seeps out the fucking ground. That's why it's so bad. Um, fish used to live in there. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, if you want the world's most... There's actually a place that's a tourist attraction um, that was an old strip mine that ran into groundwater, and they have to pump water out of it um, through filtration every single day before it overruns and uh, gets into the groundwater and, uh, the, rest of, and the rest of the, um, the rivers and stuff in the area. I'm trying to remember where that thing is. But the um, water is so acidic that it can elicit, that it um, kills birds that land in it for more than a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's really well. Put it this way, um, the Dead Sea. Um, you can go if you go there and like you can basically like do a belly flop into it, and you won't sink more than eight inches, and then you will immediately float, no matter how much you try to sink. That's how much uh, salt is, salt is in that water. Um. I was just about to say um in the in the chat 
Fred Knotts had said something. He said uh, when we were talking about the Paris Agreement, he said there's no penalty for violation of the Paris Agreement either. It's just empty promises. And he's 100% right. Um, oh, and the, the Paris Agreement only deals with industrial oh, yeah, yeah. regulations. The, the, the reason they allow ocean fertilization is because they have to distinguish between for ocean fertilization and, and dumping actual waste into the ocean, which, guess what? They used to do a lot. Oh, and a lot of places still do. That's 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 the ocean part of the Paris Agreement. It, the Paris Agreement isn't really a treaty, isn't a geoengineering treaty. It's more of a climate agreement, which we no longer are a part of. Um, oh yeah, the biodiversity. The United States isn't part of that either. And uh, when uh, Fred had said something about no penalty of vi- or, or for a violation, here's the problem. International waters. Mm. Who polices international waters? Basically the UN. Who the fuck is the UN? And why would they be anywhere where they need to be? Don't you mean the USA? Not the UN? Say again? <laughs> Don't you mean the USA and not the UN? No, no, no. The UN. Who, who polices international waters? Uh, t- whoever's got the most boats on the ocean. Yeah, China. No, no, well, who, <laughs> That's who, not China. <laughs> who is supposed to, to police international waters? Uh, the most be... toothless organization in history. Huh? The most toothless organization in history, the UN. Yeah, yeah UN. So if you go 100, I think it's 100 miles, something like that, off uh, any coast, you no longer have to abide by that country's treaties and or laws in consideration um so basically all these ocean fertilization experiments studies whatever you want to call them they they literally just skip and trace off just outside uh what do you call it um just outside the jud what is it the, the area in which they could actually be persecuted yeah, it's called an exclusion zone thank you <laughs> yeah, that would probably have been a better way of saying it. <laughs> Let's see, uh, someone in the chat's trying to get in here. Um, all right, okay, Glenn, if you join my uh, the Truth Frontline, it's in the descrip- In my description is the link to the- my Discord. Um, if you join, I can get you the link. I can just send you the link from there. Uh, and if you don't want to be part of of the server, well, if no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, you don't have to, but. I'll be able to at least know where to send the uh, link to. Let me see. You may have already done that. Yep. Sorry, that sure that's that's right. hunting. Yeah, let me make sure. Um, Glenn, is that... The, that's, you just um, joined, right? If Once you verify that you have joined, I will send a link to that name. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's a big the weird part is is that ocean fertilization is is one of those things that they are it's very easy very easy to do it outside of the public eye which is why i think it's kind of been in the public eye you know a lot of a lot of agencies or news agencies and uh and organizations they know about it they've been writing about talking about it that's how i found out about it i found out when i found out about it there were nine universities studying ocean fertilization. As I'm sitting there reading the Biodiversity Treaty, which states no ge- geoengineering and or studies until. And that means all those models that I keep telling you guys about, when, those, when they figure out a method that doesn't piss off a model enough that it just red flags every risk, then they would say, okay, we can start doing field studies. That's not even happening for anything. That's the problem. Because the reason these these aren't supposed to be done is because they kind of kind of fuck up our ecosystem. Just a little bit. I sent a link over to uh, 
the Discord for the Penn State. Uh, I guess it was a thesis for one of the students over there where they were talking about putting a layer of silica over top of Antarctica. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, the pellets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a and bad one. Yeah, I, I, I was like, how how crazy is that, that you could try to do that? And then, you you know, even as uh, inhospitable as it is, imagine all that silica going into the ocean or something like that and where that's going to well, go. Okay, well, that's not that big, big of a deal. There's a, we, we have, like, of all the material that we have, that the world is made of, there's more silica than anything else and it's in the ocean that's not so much of an issue as to the salt and the, the minerals that will bind to it that will be in the ocean because again these are going to be outside so i mean what you're saying is correct but just silica itself isn't dangerous it's not really not dangerous at all um it's really just dirt the problem is yeah no that, no when you when you uh have such a concentration of it though um Wait, I like you sure. said did you say silica or silicon silica. silica okay you know the yeah. stuff they put in your shoes when you yeah, buy a yeah, new pair yeah. of shoes and it says do not eat that's, that's why because i'm thinking the natural and okay i get it i get yeah yeah and, and such a concentration of it you know would be absolutely oh, is Somebody's mic is freaking out. Ah, there that is. one was not me. Hey, what's yeah. up, Glenn? You there? Yeah. Uh, uh, you have to watch mute your, your YouTube. Sorry? Uh, you yeah. got to mute your YouTube, or your YouTube because you're echoing back. It is muted. That's just his actual microphone uh, hitting back at us. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you. Your mic is all... You may need to... Is that any better? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's... Um... I, I kind of heard you. Say it again. Is that any better? Yeah, we can, yeah. I can hear you now. Yeah. You're a little quiet, but uh, we have no over-talkers on the panel, so you'll be good. <laughs> well, except I'm gonna for raise me, my but... voice. I'm going to raise my voice momentarily to see if I can trigger your mic to uh, feedback. And it's not working. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you did, you fixed it. It's good. Uh, sorry about the, the the lag and getting in here. I thought you I thought you tried to get in before, but I wasn't sure. I had a bunch of people, or a I couple of them. Unless, I did unless I'm crushed. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, three. Brian, three. Huh? Three. Brian, three. What is some? What does that mean? Pi is three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, uh, Sean, you missed, you, should, you missed the stupidest shit ever yesterday. Uh, we spent about um, between let's see, between all the people on the panel, eleven hours talking to James Richard, who uh, a flat earther who is also a, a biblical literalist and a young, young Earth creationist. How's that? Uh, at one point, he tried to say that the Bible was completely infallible, and everything in it is correct. So I asked him if pi was three, and we wound up on a, about a two-hour argument about how pi is not three. It was it was it was really quite a bizarre thing. Pi is not three. Yeah, the value of pi is not three. Okay, Sean. <laughs> the Bible states that the value of a circle is equivalent to three. Uh, the ratio between its, he, uh, according to the Bible, the ratio of a of a circle of circumference to its diameter is three, which is not a circle. No. <laughs> wow. You guys argue so, about yeah, that. That's worse than flat uh, Earth. <laughs> it, it really was. It really was. Um, but that wasn't the only thing that was argued uh, over the course of all this time. Uh, uh, Enoch. Oh yeah, he uh, tried to keep, he tr he kept trying to argue that the Bible is actually called the Sefer, and that the Sefer had all books in it. We asked him when the Sefer was written, and he wouldn't tell us. So we looked it up, and it was written in 1997. Well, 
everyone knows Christ came back and then left again. 97. Great year. Yeah. Actually, uh, and then Travis came on to have a talk with him because Travis is uh, essentially what most Christians would consider a heretic. And yeah, he, he thinks that Bible... he used to be super religious yeah. and then he left. He like left the church or something like that, right? Yeah, he has his own twist on how everything is and the symbology involved with it. So we had Travis's New Age, oh, everything in the Bible's already happened, talking to James Richard. No, man, everything in everything in Revelation is happening currently, and you're going to get the Mark of the Beast kind of nonsense. And that went on for about an hour and a half before Aaron was just like, I I can't deal with this asshole anymore. Wow. <laughs> oh, burn the books, burn the books, burn the books. Yeah, yeah, in the very beginning, though, in the very beginning, though, all he was doing was just asking questions. He would just go off on side topics and side topic and, you know, further down the rabbit hole. And, you know, and I just couldn't deal with it. Plus, I was tired. I fell asleep. Yeah. It, it was very bizarre. Wow. All right. So I got that link up. Let me go ahead and share it. Actually, I gotta share. I'll do it this way. I was wondering why guys. people kept saying. I was wondering why people kept saying three to me in the chat. <laughs> All right, I will uh. present. <clears throat> this is the okay. So this is the link uh, Sean Smith was talking about. Uh, unfortunately, that I knew about. <laughs> um, this one. Believe it or not, it's considered a geoengineering because it would, if they did it on the scale that they want to, it would basically. Okay, so this is weird. So, supposedly, the idea of this is almost the same as wearing a white shirt. Sun reflects off it better, it doesn't mm -hmm. absorb. So, the idea is to basically. I'm trying to find, I don't even know where the hell it is. Um, Oh, here it is. I should, I should, should give it to me now. Uh, basically, and, and again, they do this to make it, I honestly make the, oh my gosh, you got to see what I'm going to say first before I even say it. Sean, I'm pretty sure you've seen the picture of, of the nope. actual um, pellet that they want to use. Um, apparently, Aaron really yeah. wanted to chat. He gave you $50 and... Um... Promises not to troll. What the fuck? God damn it, Aaron. <laughs> <sighs> Even after Sean so, said, Aaron, don't give me the money. Yeah, I know. So, Aaron, thank you, my friend. Apparently, I'm the only troll. And the only super chatter. Aaron vows to not troll. Cheer, Sean. Spend as you wish. Yes, me and YouTube will. Um, Aaron... <laughs> I don't stop. Like, I like super chats, but you give such stupid super chats that I don't even want them. Just stop being a troll. Don't disrespect, and sure as hell, never in your life talk shit about someone who's not here to defend themselves, especially if it has nothing to do with the topic at hand. Wow, they really are thinking about covering a large swath of the um of the Antic of the Antarctic or Arctic oh, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, big time. Uh, let me go ahead and share that link to everyone. Hey, what's up, uh, what's up, Glober Mom? Um, guys, I found a new channel today. Um, I forget. I think I want to try to remember who. Oh, if I look at my someone in my um comments. I shared a link to a YouTuber, and the YouTuber is very name Glober Mom. Um, it interests me when I heard the name, so I checked it out, and uh, it's actually it's good content. I like it. It has uh, exactly what you would expect a Glober Mom to uh, present. Uh, go check her out, please sub, and uh, thank you for the content, Glober Mom. I uh, can't wait to see more. Actually, I really did enjoy it. Um. Am I reading that correct, that they want to put over 240 billion tons of this shit down? Yes. Are Two they the, fucking our material mental? material breaks down and becomes part of the 2.8 million tons that are currently exist in the ocean. Uh, I'm feeding... There's, there's a bunch of other areas. Let me get to it. Um, 
But he wants to put a hundred times that on top of Antarctica and yes. watch it slowly. Because do they know about glacial movement and that it will convey a belt that silica into the ocean? Uh, they should. <laughs> well, see, that's the problem with a lot of the, the projects that are going on is that they, they present them as these wonderful ideas. But the problem is, is that they don't at all add, you know, the realization of what's really going on, like how it really works. Well, to be fair, if this got into the oceans, it was it would essentially be sand. Mm. Mm. No, yeah. not not necessarily, not necessarily, because uh, sand is made up of, of a bunch of different particles. It's not just you know, not just silica. typical sand. Yeah. Um, and to have that much, uh, that much that that's put in there with without the the um, bacteria and stuff like that put into the ocean is going to completely change that the the ocean floor around it. The composition um, of yeah. it, the the, sit, the pH of it, because exactly. Yeah. That's actually, a, it's actually a re, it'd be a really fine balance if this didn't work and it actually worked as a and actually worked as a thermal insulator. It would and just trapped heat to the ground. It would then that'd be a big big problem. Well, it wouldn't attract mm. heat as much. It was it would trap whatever heat is there. Oh, that's what I said. Trap. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I did. I mean, you're <laughs> you're speaking low. <laughs> yeah, but even even if this stuff did go in and turn into sand, if you add two hundred and forty six billion tons of it to the bottom of the ocean floor guess what's going to happen to the ocean it's going to fucking rise mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> i don't think they're going to use noticeably. enough uh but see here here's why i think th these are things that i read and i see your red flags so i'll go ahead and highlight what i'm going to read why aren't you working Hang on, my my mouse is acting funny. Well, let me. There we go. Let you highlight it. Man, it was acting weird. Okay, so it says silica is a compound made of of two of the Earth's most abundant materials, silicon and oxygen. Fuck. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like it's like together? Like, um. The mass of the Earth's crust is 59% silica, the main construct of more than 90% of the known rocks. That's not really saying what else it is, mm, or, or what else is in it, because it's not, it's not but, just silica, it's just not silica. Yeah, yeah, okay, so rocks, rocks are not just made from silica, there's all the other components that mix together with the silica to create the rock, okay? Just because if a percentage of it is silica doesn't mean it's the same silica you've got in your fucking hand. Yeah, no, no, no. Hang on. Chemical Hang on. bonding changes the attribute of that element. I'm going to so show these, you guys. Cause I, I, this is ground quartz. <laughs> yeah. There, there are a lot of really fine silica, sand, a little really um, fine and... Um, Good to look, uh, pure silica sands around. Um, okay, I'm they're looking... not that Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, they're generally not that bad for the environment unless they get on top of stuff, which is really what's going to happen when it gets conveyed off. Um, uh, and it's going to get covered up by snow, so it's it's going to lose its reflectivity anyway. You have to keep on adding it. Also, wind. Wind will do it too. This stuff is like okay. This stuff is very fine. The stuff they're gonna use is extremely fine, and that would be the issue because, like you were just saying, there's different types of uh, the material of, of that you would find silica in, or wait, or you know, different ways you would find it. Because these, all these that you're seeing now, is natural. I'm used to mine when I work. I'm mine is more of a dark gray, like a dark brown. I mean. But like oh, this yeah. stuff, that's, I've never seen that. But you've never seen wait, you've never seen the the white rocks at the very top. That's just, those are just uh, quartz um, granules. Kitty litter, crystallized kitty litter. But that's not natural though. 
that's silica. That's is this how it is? Yeah. See that that with the blue yeah. in it? That that's kitty litter. But that's silica gel. Well, that's because that's the stuff that they will absorb it. Yeah, but it's, you see how it's white? Yeah, but it's not that mm-hmm. I, I just sort of transparent. Of, I just didn't. No, no. I, I, just, I just didn't know it was as fine as they're using. It's just crushed, like sugar or caster sugar. Mm-hmm. Okay, I said that out wild loud, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a family show. Um, <laughs> yeah, this. I, <laughs> it. This doesn't make sense to me. So they want to make snow and ice whiter. Yep. Yeah, I don't know how that mm. actually works out on the whitest place on the planet. <laughs> uh, in, in the northern hemisphere, um, a lot of the ice, especially seasonal ice, is, is a little bit... Um, Dark and the really permanent ice is quite dark, uh, quite a bit darker than it should be because of all the pollution. Well, I remember, yeah. up there. Uh, I remember bacteria years ago when the first talks of uh, global, you know, greenhouse gases and, and emissions started really coming to light. I know, like in uh, I forget where it was, but they did like a, a Vice did like a story on it, and they were saying like um, basically all the emissions and all that stuff comes like that uh, dark brownish black sooty looking, you know, basically the crap in the air and that was kind of what was giving it that blanket to absorb the heat but one of the things i was trying to figure out is for one like it is even you know the ice caps are all there it's a rejuvenating situation you know different time of year it expands it contracts um but one of the things that the i i just started hearing about i'd never heard before was new ice you guys know about that like how that works is new ice versus the old ice ice caps specifically uh not particularly no yes i i i have heard of it it's when um uh when glaciers uh glaciers get a certain amount of snow up on top of them that it actually freezes hard instead of being like slush. Ah, uh, okay. So, all right. so then what happens is that entire chunk of ice will slide down the glacier. Yeah. So instead instead of being small particles of ice, it's actually a big chunk of ice, and that's the new ice. And it's got that sort of bluish hue to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the only new ice I've heard of. Uh, but, okay, oh, Sean, I, I found I found that pit I was talking about. I'm going to put it to you in the side chat. Um, it's it's covered in well, it's a pit that's filled with iron and copper, and has some of the most lovely acidity ever uh, <laughs> ever devised. If you were to drink a cup full of it, it would probably eat through your stomach lining. Damn. <laughs> it take one second. Because oh, you, uh, you don't have to go. You don't have to go to it now. I just uh, I just had to look for it for a second. Okay, yeah, I'll look at it. Um. So, you guys think that's kind of a weird one? Fuck this one. Because I read this one a while ago, and I went, are you out your fucking minds? I'm going to share this one. Okay. You guys are going to love this. Salt spray may prove feasible geoengineering. Now let me explain to you what they want to do. So you know how they were talking about um, spreading that silica over the whole Arctic? Yeah. Yeah, well there's there's a university that is doing a study to decide if feasible or not to set up pumps drill under the ice into the ocean and then spray cold water on the ice.
So essentially, they want to. <laughs> okay. They want to make it rain. <laughs> oh. So they want to manufacture more ice. Yes. Like my, with in, what they want with large, large, large ass pumps. Could you imagine the diesel fuels coming off of that, off of those pumps? <laughs> Thank you. Someone <laughs> said it because that was a red flag to me right off the bat. I thought we were trying to solve an issue, and yet we're still creating issues. Again, all the geoengineering, most of the risks involve emitting more. <laughs> that's so, that's the main thing we haven't figured out yet. That's the reason why geoengineering should not be even tested, because they still haven't figured out how to make less of an issue than... Um. And to actually solve That's it. why we're waiting on Skunk Works, man. Skunk Works is going to give us that uh, that mobile fusion device, and then all the power will be free, and we'll get we'll be able to do shit like this. And then wait, then Skunk Works will be out of the job, or all the engine and fuel, fossil fuel companies being out of the job? Hell no, never going to happen. Oh, all fossil fuels won't be out of a job. It'll just it would be one of those things to where fossil fuels would would um have to would necessarily have to phase out because. Um, battery technology and it get into the battery game and battery technology would be the thing from there on out well if, if it, could, it out couldn't that, happen overnight if they figure out solar batteries ooh, holy crap fossil fuels and, in trouble and fossil fuels still wouldn't go away because you would ne you would need them for plastics because um the is it the uh the non-hydrocarbon plastics are really quite crappy still well yeah you need kerosene to make plastics like, don't they have uh, alternative ways in it by now? Not see, none that are any good. Yeah, okay. they don't have stable <laughs> polymers. Oh, super super uh, toxic when burnt. Super toxic after life after a certain lifespan. Not recyclable type shit. Well, using it to uh, to make plastics is not the same as burning it to capture the energy. Very true. I'm burning a hydrocarbon and getting CO2 out of it is very different than um, taking a set of hydrocarbons, forming them into a polymer, and having them locked in place within a, within a fixed body. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it's, it's like making the mistake about benzene in food compared to benzene in petrol. I have a question. What's up, Aaron? Hey, Sean, first of all, I'd like to apologize if I uh, was trolling. I'm not sure what a troll is, but apparently now I know. And if anybody on your show was offended, I apologize to them on air and with the Super Chat that uh, that was not my meaning. I'm not here to offend people or um, disrespect folks, um, especially for just who they are. So <clears throat> I am sorry about that. Um, right, thank you. Not sure how the meaning was taken, and uh, but it was obviously not taken lightly. And I respect that, so I appreciate you. You know, correcting me on that. That was okay. Okay. You want to add to the the topic? Uh, I had a question about polymers and hydrocarbons because blue came on and. Uh, I was just wondering, because I'm not an expert in it, and maybe blue is not either, but this is a great discussion about carbon and hydrogen. <laughs> like two of the most prevalent elements uh, on this sphere, I guess, I, I should say, so I won't be a troll. Um, when they combine, we you know, provided to us, right, Lou? You know, plastics, I mean, just everything. Hydrocarbon is something we can't live without, basically. And, well, let's say man-made, sorry. Man-made refined hydrocarbons are something we can't live without. Nature itself provides those, too, with trees and uh, dirt, land, iron ore, 
<coughs> water. Um, so I was just wondering, um, on Sean's topic of um, geoengineering, Land. iron ore, could it, <coughs> in, uh, I'll water. ask Blue directly, um, could it be a just a cycle where the numbers we are parasites? Yeah, we're we're kind of parasites using up you know the land we stand on mining it selling it uh, spraying it whatever but would it isn't it kind of a cycle because nature is much bigger than us i guess it's kind of my point you know like uh so you're talking about the the co2 numbers and everything yeah, I'm just trying to say that. Look, all, all the all the hydrocarbons that we have produced into plastics. Let's say bottles. Uh, uh, you know, hydrocarbon doesn't isn't man-made. Um, refined. Sorry. It comes from crude oil and natural gas. Yes. Yeah, we've refined it to make um, everything from nylon to HDPE, and. And those those wastes after we drink the soda and we throw away the soda bottle, um, I agree that yeah, it's still in that form. Uh, but would the Earth not take that back in? Uh, I'm just at, I'm not trolling. I'm asking a question. Like at, at what point could we pull out all of the hydrocarbon of the Earth? And just be left with a pile of bottles. Like, at what point? <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, let's see. That's actually no. a good question, too, because we haven't reached peak oil that we're aware of. We keep finding new ways to get it out. And yeah. uh, new ways to extract more. Yeah. Which is also an issue, because that carbon the carbon capture that, they, that they're selling and promoting and all that crap, that's all they're using it for. They're, they're storing less than a sixteenth of what they capture, and the rest is either pumped or transported to uh, to to oil sites to extract more. Are are the oil resources? We're talking. Go ahead, Blue. Sorry. Well, no, I was just gonna gonna try to try to address a little bit of what you said, Aaron. I. Um, if man were not on the planet, uh, there's not not a doubt that uh, this planet goes through periodic changes in its in its climate. It always has, and it would do that whether we were here or not. But I think the the evidence on the table right now is pretty overwhelming that this particular time the change has taken place much much faster than it ever has in the past. And you have to look and, and see the uh, extreme modification that we've made to the planet, you know, in terms of making nice black highways and black rooftops and, you know, taking forests out so that we'll have places to build condominiums and all the oil and coal and whatever that we burn. So and you look at that... Uh, you look at what's what's happening to the CO2. Without a doubt, if the climate warms up, the oceans warm up, it's going to release CO2 that's in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So you can bring yourself to the question of, you know, which way is it? Is is the is the CO2 le level rising because the climate's heating up, or is the climate heating up because the CO2 level's rising? It's an interesting question, but I got to go along with the experts and believe that we're having something to do with this. Yeah, I, I, I come from both sides. I I think they are fear-porning the information, um, but I would be completely naive to think that even though, yeah, it, it, compared to how long Earth's been around and compared to the Industrial Age, zero. But even if we, that we were 10 years into the Industrial Age, we are still adding to something. And if you don't think that adding to something will affect something. I don't know where, where your head's at. Second, 
If you go into a room and no one do this, I can't believe I actually have to say this every time. If you go into a room with no pollutants, no gas, no dangerous gases, and then you slowly fill it up, we'll say with like you know those little mini cups you take little shots of water out of out of the cooler. If you had a way to contain it and you just empty, just threw some 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 gases into the room like that once a day. But again, you know, the gases can't leave that room and you can't. It, it's, for the first you know, year, it ain't going to be shit. You're just going to look at the person and laugh that they keep throwing this empty cup in there. But uh, over time, even though it's very little, it will increase and become a lot. And it will become a problem and it will, become, it will affect the system in which that room you stay in. That's just the reality of it. I, you cannot say we don't play a part. We do. Period. And yeah. And if all the, the records, the worst thing. What? Sean. The worst thing is. Go ahead. Sean is that a particular famous scientist by the name of Carl Sagan said this back in the nineteen eighties that climate change is upon us. Oh, you want to? Oh, you're going to love to see this. So, I, oh, I think please bring up the oil and gas. Uh, please bring up the oil and gas um, papers where they said that. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, so, again, this isn't public knowledge because they made so. Um, back in the sev- late seventies, early eighties, the same way the IPCC and all these other agencies are coming around, going. We need to do this because if we don't, this will happen. Well, the the leaders of that actually used to be the the fossil fuel companies themselves because they were trying to basically see what right you know they this is the time when they're they're pretty it was pretty lax so regulations were going to start happening you know they were talking about making it a little bit more strict and they wanted to look like the good guys. Exxon's, the BPs, and, and again, I mean, they at the time, I think they were trying to, you know, they didn't want to be caught off guard with any kind of regulations. So they wanted to be the ones that got the word before anyone else. So they did all the reports that you're hearing about now, talking about um, if we don't do this, this will happen. If we don't do this, this will happen. And then I came across, so I'm going to open that one up first. But I know why they did it. I know why they um, first uh, suppressed the, the, those publications and studies from the public. And two, why they, they're, um, why, why basically all these regulations keep getting taken off. Um, why it was not talked about in the public size for what, 20, 30 years. I, I got, I got that. I'm going to say I got proof of that. How about that? Hey, That's Sean. Like, what's that? What's up? This, this sounds like another big production company that had a similar thing happen back in the eighties and nineties by the cigarette companies. Yep. Similar story. Mm-hmm. Cover up the medical findings, deny the medical findings. And tell people that it's still okay, even though there's massive proof against it, to say it's killing you. That's the same thing for the fossil fuel giants. Deny the science, deny the claims, deny the evidence, That's very deny important. what's right in front of you. I'm, I'm actually not certain that um, largely the oil and gas companies deny anymore so much as uh, deny anymore so much as they argue the severity and the impact um, in certain region in certain regions. Well, it's, it's yeah, that's worse now. Than, well, it's worse than that because now you know who polices these the companies, these oil companies themselves. Fuel? Yep, they self regulated. They self regulate, and if need be, they hire a, a a company that oversees you, but they give you the findings first before you hand them over to to uh, EPAs and all that shit. It's very self-policed. It's insanely self-policed. It's bad. Really bad. Just like all the oil rigs and everything else. Yep. 
is uh, drilling well, the problem or is consumption the problem? Okay. Consumption equaling economies, growth, bondholders, stocks, Wall it's Street. You know it's the I mean? whole yeah. thing, Aaron. Yep. Everything from the drilling and pulling it up because they have to burn off the gas to be able to get the oil to come up. Because if they don't burn off the gas, they get pressure and it decides to explode. Uh, then from there, there's the transport from the oil rig to the refinery. And then the refinery has to create carbon dioxide to refine the oil into the petrol. And then on and on and on and on. So, yeah, it starts from drilling. What, what is nature's role in this, Demonic? Um, fossils. Okay. Is nature not still doing that? So at this point, we are uh, we are releasing more stored carbon than oxygen can be sequestered by by nature. Now there are times that nature also way outdoes us. Like there are some very uh, immense volcanic eruptions that have put more of gases into the atmosphere than we could hope to in several years. But that doesn't mean that we aren't that we aren't accelerating the is it uh, the rate of um, the removal is it the um, release of CO2. Uh, Brian, I'm not trolling, Sean. I just want to know. <laughs> Aaron, you, you don't is have to CO2, sleep like that, man. Is CO2 a problem? Just because we can't breathe it, it doesn't um, mean it doesn't become it, it's, uh, it's not homogenous that, or okay, inhomogenous. It's, you know. so, yeah, Aaron, it's not a problem by itself. Yeah, it's... Well, the main... One of the main issues is that it... I guess one of the big things is that it doesn't allow the sun's radiation to actually leave, uh, return back into space uh, as one aspect. Also, from what I'm getting, um, what I'm reading through it, is that it, it basically is, it, it's, it's a clogging effect. There's only so much emissions that our atmosphere can handle compared to the, the clean stuff. So it's, everything is not dissipating like it's supposed to. It's becoming too much. In a crux Carbon. of it all. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are very, uh, what we would call relative gases to the surface. They they don't travel, you know, up to the ozone. Or, no, they do. Or, um, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are relative gases. Um, and they're very minuscule compared to the other gases that we breathe that we call Compared air, to what? Such as nitrogen. What does relative gases mean, Aaron? Meaning relative to you and me. They, they, what? Stays... No, you know they existed without us being here. Yes. He, what yes. he means is that they exist in higher concentrations near, is it near to the surface of the Earth because they are yep, heavier right. gases that are less easily excited. And that is true. Yeah, but the, the word relative doesn't need to be in that sentence. I meant relative to me and you, like our... He means, he means he means relevant but relevant relative by position. That's it. That's no big deal. But so on. Um, but what he said. But those gases do, at some point, would escape. I mean, almost none of it does, Sean. Then and when you get to, when you when you get to the top end of the atmosphere, about the only thing there is hydrogen and a very very small amount of helium. Mm -hmm. okay. The heavier oh, gas oh, just don't make it. You're, oh, you're talking like the mesosphere and uh, and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When I say it, the CO two is not escaping, no, it's not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna uh, reach your your hand out the window of the ISS and find a CO two molecule floating around. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, but, but I don't. Because you can't roll a fucking window down to begin with, but. Yeah, I don't want to discount Sean's point when he said about sun's radiation. So I was only thinking about my relative position and the gases we might be in. Sean was talking about, um, you know, solar radiation coming in and, and uh, possibly changing the whatever the Earth is because we're adding gases to the atmosphere and shit's bouncing off. So I don't want to discount Sean's point. All I was saying, though, was uh, CO2 and, and uh, CO, I think, are we're breathing it right now. It's, 
but okay. in low doses. Because a, mm-hmm. I do know this for a fact, a pocket of CO2 will kill a village. Oh, yeah. Given enough time, absolutely. It's done it no, before. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Doesn't take that much time. Lake, lakes overturn sometimes. Yes, that's a few of the stories I know about are those. Um, yeah. and they that, turn red. Yeah, lakeside but, villages. Yes, yeah, and that, but, that's a... That's the dangerous part about the carbon sequestration of, you know, us storing it in land um, is because we know in nature it's these pockets are, I mean, these aren't just like right under the ground, it's not a hundred feet below the surface. There's a pocket mm-hmm. of CO2. Well, if there is, it's a problem, but um, we don't know how, how the earth can search, conser- how the earth can sequester that much carbon dioxide without it releasing which means our techniques aren't feasible they're not tested enough so the risk of say i think the one i heard about was like in the thousands amount like if i were talking tonnage i guess it was like a thousands tonnage that uh leaked out of that lake and they sequester in the millions so Imagine a, a, a pocket of CO2. See, it just caught on. Now I know why it doesn't leave because it's too heavy. Um, <laughs> a million, <laughs> a, a pocket of the of millions tons of this uh, carbon dioxide sweeping through a large city would be very catastrophic. Very yeah. catastrophic. Yeah, those events happened when they had like landslides, and it's about the same effect that you get when you shake up a soda. Hmm. All the CO two that was down on the bottom got uh, got shaken up, was shaken up, um, and uh, and just erupted out of the out of the lakes. It's happening in a couple of places. You can actually see the exact same happen, exact same thing happen on uh, YouTube. They've got pictures of the hap- of a sublimation effect happening when uh, when pockets of um, frozen methane fracture under the ocean. It looks yeah. ridiculous. It is yeah. actually quite amazing. I've never heard yeah. that before. Actually, yeah, that that popped up on my feed a couple of days ago. That it was in Russia somewhere, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, up 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 in the north of Russia, where methane pockets under the ocean started releasing unexpected amounts of methane, and they showed the bubbling coming up through the water, and it it's white in the bubble. Ooh. <laughs> this kind yeah, of there have been there have been sense. theories around for years I that uh, that may be what goes on in the Bermuda Triangle. What well, people get swallowed up by a methane bubble? Yeah, that right. uh, well, with the, if you put enough uh, methane bubbles in the uh, in the water, and a ship happens to be in that mess, it will lose uh, it buoyancy. Yeah, so it'll just go right down. Yeah. Same with so, the air. Wait, so how did, hmm. So I thought, I, okay. I thought methane was a byproduct. Oh, no, we got, see, we got methane all over the place. So yeah. it's, okay, so it's not only for mass. <laughs> no, 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 no. Plants, plants create methane too, Sean. They do. Mm-hmm. Methanogenic bacteria cause methane, mm. and that's what causes new gut as well. I've heard mm. that before. Okay, I get it now. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, okay. Which is actually got kind of segues me into more. So you guys heard about uh, the, the methane uh, regulations, right? Pretty sure. Rain's are... fart. Say again? What's up, Travis? <laughs> I was just making fun. I said brain fart. That's methane. <laughs> 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 um, you, so here in the, here in the United States, uh, the EPA wants to basically drop most of the methane regulations that are uh, that most industry has to abide by because it's it's worthless I guess it's not can't store it doesn't cost you know they can't I guess that what if they could convert it it's not worth it so uh, they're no longer paying for storage or scrubbing of it so uh, they're lifting regulations but I'm not sure if anyone else. I'm pretty sure you guys, since you guys know about methane buffalo, I didn't. But um, basically, I guess methane plays a bigger role in the global warming 
than than most would think and how they they talk about it now is is sickening um i'm only irritated by this because i heard about the the regular lifting of the most of the regulations and then i come across um the epa who is lifting will allow these these regulations to be lifted it has like web pages like that are longer than most documents talking about how dangerous methane is in our atmosphere how all of a sudden does it get just safe not safe how is it just not dangerous uh no i, I eat food. isn't that is that the same food. thing with radon yeah i eat yeah. food travis hold on well and the thing is radon is a lot on, oh, sorry, I, go fart, ahead. I fart a gas and it's called methane how that happens i have no idea are you or sure you fart not? methane well yeah, do you have that bacteria in your gut that creates methane? I don't. I mean, doesn't I all of nature, all well, nature's actually, animals have that same thing too? Because they fart also, right? Actually, uh, no. Cows uh, don't fart methane. Uh, actually, some some breeds do. Um, that's a, that wasn't meant to be a gotcha error, and it's just one of those things where um, actually a decent portion of human population doesn't have that particular gut bacteria. It's a... Um, it's just kind of a hit or miss. Wait, 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 wait. Step back. I was looking at something, but I heard it. What do you mean cows don't fart methane? I thought Not all cows actually. They, they actually burp more methane than they pass through their gut. Oh, it's so like a bird. Okay. Birds can't burp. <laughs> so they do something I stand else. corrected. Wait. <laughs> Burping is, a, is just air in your stomach. Birds can't burp. Like, you could even know but, that. Have you ever given a bird Alka Seltzer? Okay, watch this throat explode. That that's how I know. That doesn't that. mean they don't burp. You want to bet? Cows, cows move. They don't burp. I, look, Travis, if a bird eats Alka Seltzer, guess what will happen? Okay, hold on, hold on. To me, that's a non sequitur. We're talking about burping, right? Uh -huh. Like, a, like if I if I suck in air uh -huh. inappropriately, yeah, I can burp it back out. It doesn't yeah. have to be a product. It, stop saying yes, yeah, smartass. Well, I'm, I'm agreeing with you so far. Okay, well, well, whenever you do that, usually it's like, uh-huh, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. and you're totally like not even paying attention. Anyway, uh -huh. I'm yeah. you, uh -huh. Uh -huh. My, my point yes. is, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you guys go are funny. Let's go. Anyway, my point is like, I'm sure somewhere in this world, a, a bird has gone Burp! at least some point. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They are Wait. unable. No, no, they're unable to. I don't believe at, that. I just at best, that. It, at it best, gives them more at speed. Best we can say, at best, yeah. we can say we don't know because we have no documentation. That's of like happening. saying birds don't hiccup. When when birds fart, they get a little bit faster. Right? <laughs> Jet propulsion. Hyperspeed, Chewy. <laughs> okay, so. Anyway, you, back to the methane carbon hang on, issue. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Have you ever? Eaten uh, Alka Seltzer, Travis? Yes, I have, but I don't see how that precludes a bird from having uh, a bubble of air in its in its stomach that escapes out its mouth, and that's okay. called a burp. Okay. Why do birds blow up then? That's not. That's a. That's a completely. I do not see that as relevant to me. Okay. I've seen it happen to a seagull. Oh, I've. I know that. No, 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 no. I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I've heard the stories. I've never done it myself. I don't see how that precludes a burp. Okay. What? They can't happens, release the gas. Yeah. What happens if you can't? Yeah. What happens if you can't release that that fizzy stuff? No, I think that that is a. I think that's like um holding a firecracker in your hand and not expecting to get uh, damage to your no, hand because no, 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 it's, no, no. It's, different. it's a small space and you've got this large chemical reaction. That's what's going on. It's not that the burp can't go. It's not that the bird can't think, oh, shit, I wish I knew how to burp. Then and why then don't you dies. explode? Why don't people yeah, explode then? Yeah. yeah, but Travis, it, it, Travis, it's the same thing that happens in your stomach. It's a small area. And when you have the Alka-Seltzer. as small as a bird's? Maybe. You can cut up a piece of Elka seltzer and feed it to a bird. Oh yeah, it's, it's not the size. Yeah, it's okay, not the okay, it's so not the size ask, of it. All right, so let me ask this question then. So Sean, when you say to me, when you answer my question by asking a question, uh, what are time. you, what are you implying by 
uh, this saying, is Cosmographia, have you ever given a bird the Randall like, Carlson what's the podcast. Point of that because I don't understand the answer. Because when, when you answer my question, when you answer my question with a question, I don't understand your answer. I don't know what you're trying to prove to me it's because, by asking me another question. All right, Travis, if you want the answer to your question, it's because birds don't aren't able to properly vent the gas that happens from the from the from the dissolving tablet, and their stomachs swell up, and and they is it and they can actually have a rupture of their stomach, causing them to have a, a number of problems, including death. I'm also guessing that they're not because they're not uh, us that they don't go. Ooh, my tummy! I need to burp or fart. I agree. Uh, Alka Seltzer may have been um, designed or, or uh, chemically formulated to a human stomach, based upon uh, Brian's right. research of you know uh, reactions inside it, fluids, gases, uh, all that stuff. But when you give it to a dog or a bird or a monkey or something, yeah, something else might happen. Apparently. But, but that doesn't mean that methane, as Sean was on there, uh, we need to keep talking about that. Look at Aaron bringing it back to topic. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm a troll. <laughs> yeah, you are. Anyway, I remember, okay. <laughs> I remember reading something in the past couple of weeks about radon uh, now being, you know, their their evaluation of the uh, the health value of radon is like, almost a 180 degree turn like it's not as bad as they were saying it once was radon meaning uh, well it also depended on where where you were at and and the level of of radon that you were gaining um in in the northeast in the northeast uh, there there were problems with people digging down uh for a basement and uh, they they would hit they would uh, have their basement and their entire house would be filled with radon gas before they even knew it. Sure, because radon exists in the rock strata, you know, below the earth, obviously. And when humans dig down, um, we may find that obviously through unfortunate circumstances. But is that's not a that's nothing human caused, right, Sean? I mean, I mean, not well, human caused. I guess we dug well, down. Yeah, but, it's, it's, you know. mm, yeah, because you're the human. You're if you're digging, you're releasing. Uh, that's kind of what ge the geologists and the uh, are, are kind of for when you, they're hired to come out there, or they're you know when they're the soils techs are out there doing that. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for signs of stuff. Not all of That's them are geologists. Sean, you know yeah. this. That's the, what a drill test is for, right? You you drill first, right? You, you, you're supposed to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> supposed to, exactly, Sean. <laughs> we never do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I will not confirm or deny that last one. <laughs> yeah, releasing Rodan into the atmosphere is not good. It gets everybody thinking. Damn, that joke was flatter than my ex's tits. I'm sorry. You said a joke? Well, he said, uh, don't release Rodan into the atmosphere. And immediately the first thing I thought of was uh, the statues he made. Who? <laughs> Rodan. I have no idea. Have you not seen Godzilla? No, I don't. I don't watch those. I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's an aggravate the shit out of me. Uh, Three. I have a question. Did you just say something all negative to me? And one of your little what, three language. Yeah. I heard <laughs> that. Sean, I have a question for the um, uh, smarter than me on the panel. <laughs> Which I've already, I've already, I've already told everyone, that, Aaron. I'm convinced you're extremely smart. You just play them. <laughs> um, methane. It's a natural gas that uh, Big Blue produces, probably in large amounts. Um, I'm a smaller guy, so I, I produce some. Uh, Travis, he's probably got his fair share going on. It's a Big Blue, 
simple question right here. Is methane a natural gas? Um, Most definitely. That's what okay. <laughs> that's what it's called. Natural gas. Okay, okay. That's what that's what is that's it what, is it produced by the earth or is it produced by you and me? Uh, when oh. we but yeah, I mean, the answer is both, Brian, uh, as Brian just said. Here, here comes yeah. the conundrum, right? You can, you, when you take it out of the ground, uh, the natural gas wells, right? Uh, well, natural, natural gas, gas is that's, right? When we no, say LP, it's, not or... different. It's, it's CH4, it's the same stuff. Okay. It's methane. So, <clears throat> this is interesting, isn't it? That what we eat, you know, from nature, and what we produce, and when I when I go to the extreme and I, I I go into climate change by cutting down forests and I'm but I'm producing all this energy, but we're also giving back a little bit. Um, my point is, um, do you think, Blue, that the nature we live in is a reciprocal cycle, right? We, we consume, we, we give back. We, we consume, we, we replenish. We, you, you kind of follow me there? Even with hydrocarbons. I don't see how we're replenishing hydrocarbons. Where are they going? We're using them up. And having them released into the atmosphere is not the same as replenishing them. Right. Replenish, uh, replenishing them in that way would be uh, would be finding a way to sequester them, sequester them outside of the atmosphere. Do Do we all agree then that, that there is a finite source of hydrocarbons? Let's say the mm. Earth is not, no. not producing no. more even at this time. Right? Huh? Well, the Earth is producing more. It just it's a long process. We can accelerate it, and we've actually um, succeeded at making some central hydrocarbons out of components. It's just very energy intensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's working. this thing called synthetic oil. Yeah. So, but here's what I want to ask. So, pulling out a uh, liquid substance called oil, uh, um, crude, from the oil, from the earth, sh shoal, whatever you want to call it, um, how is that uh, taking away from the earth? Like it's, we got to go down four or five miles to get it, frack over here, frack over there. The earth doesn't know it's there. It's not doing anything. It's sitting in pockets and bubbles. It doesn't know, you know, the uh, nature it, above it, it, it doesn't it, look, know, look, look, look. doesn't know it's, that it's there. Okay, look, right? it's in the ground. Yeah. We take it out. It's in the atmosphere. It does, as it, gases, which is that, where it came from, right, John? Yeah, but we've taken it from one place and put it to where it shouldn't be. Well, it's not only in the atmosphere. It, we turn it into plastics that are floating in the oceans. It's everywhere. We have began, land dumps that are filled with it, plus began, all the other stuff that we throw in there, which create messes of, of nasty stuff that, that seeps into the ground. It ruins the uh, it ruins the water system of the surrounding communities as well. Have you ever heard of a you know a landfill? Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a a really bad methane problem. And as of uh, late, they've started to uh, use scrubbers, but uh, they're those will go away because they're not going to get any money off it or breaks. You from know it. they 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 pipe that no, methane. No, the older ones do. Because I've worked at I've worked at um, a few of them that that do exactly what you're saying. They put a liner down, then they put a layer of dirt, then they put trash, and then basically run pipes through each level, and that those the methane then seeps from the landfill into the atmosphere. They're trying to stop that. They're starting to put uh, scrubbers on and and, and uh, tanks on them. Who, so who is trying, Sean? I, uh, I agree with you. The, I've seen lot, it. Yes. Um, I don't know the names right offhand, but they're it's. There's quite a few that are doing it now. Where they're using Probably big oil. Types. No, no, it's not oil. It's it's landfill. It, but it, it's um. Uh, counties, just cities, a, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Well, 
uh, waste management is one yeah. of them. They 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 are nationwide, and they're starting to do it. They're also yeah. working yeah. on um, biofuels as well, uh, and also uh, redoing the uh, uh, taking some of that methane and turning it into fuel that they sell back to the electric companies. Yeah, yeah. The, Sean, the landfills, or, uh, the two, three Sean. landfills that I was running, uh, running dirt to, um, we were regulated by LEA, and that's a, um, and uh, that's a, I don't know, it's, a, it's actually what is that? District, LEA. It's What's more that? of a district ran, um, environmental agency of some sort, right? It's LEA. Other, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It basically, their environment. It's basically Los Angeles's Orange County's. Uh, environmental agency but yeah they they regulated us and they would basically i think it was every quarter would basically bring those little machines out and stick them on the ends of the pvc pipe sticking out of the ground and let us know if we we're still going to be able to work or not yeah. so sean smith um i have a well of course i have a question god damn it i'm trolling i guess uh, I'm sorry, no, John. Aaron, I don't mean to Aaron, troll. There's a, Aaron, there's a huge difference between trolling and asking questions. I mean, this is, you're doing all, you're doing all right, bud. You don't have to apologize at every moment. So if we stack our garbage, as uh, Sean G knows all about, we stack our garbage into the land. We we possibly dig a pit and then put garbage in there and stack it all up and put earth above it. We put. That's what Sean was doing, I think, was just stacking ground, you know, root soil all above this garbage. But yet with pipes. Three foot lift. Yeah, and three foot lift. But with pipes, every three foot lift, guaranteed. And the product of that garbage was a valuable resource called methane. You know, Sean just told us that there's problems with that about selling it or moving it or, or transporting that gas, and you know the county shuts people down. But well, not to mention collecting plastics, it. <laughs> plastics, garbage bags, everything you throw away, everything I throw away. The the natural byproduct of that is methane, a natural gas. That's kind of cool, I think. Well, it is, it, it, but the problem the problem with it is, uh, one, is cost, because it costs a lot to collect that methane, and number two is that you, you will always have more trash than you are getting uh, from fuels. Mm. More trash, more gas. It doesn't really work that way, because you're, you're trying to work levels. Uh, most landfills have to work in in sections uh, because they uh, you know they have to set up one level on one area and the other two are being filled up. Uh, the the uh, the area the area is going to continue to get larger, um, which which is the biggest issue. Yes. Sure. That's why. Uh, that's why. Thank God or whoever created this sphere I'm a flat earther but sphere <laughs> um, we have plenty of earth to replenish it by throwing our trash back into it and creating a, a source a resource for fuel like why not well the problem Taking is most of, the stuff, most of the stuff we make isn't biodegradable Yeah, well, that's plastic. All plastic. Have you seen a landfill shot? Did you just ask me if I've seen a landfill again? I mean, yeah, that was trolling, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was, you've been to a landfill. You know what people throw in there. You know how you and your company had to, um, were regulated to backfill and, and lifts and, and create that create that landfill. And they also put a pipe sticking straight out up the top or two with oh, a no, flame. No, 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 no. There's all, like, right? there's at least, if I remember correctly, maybe 15 outlets. And no, the don't torch any of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. Well, down, down here in Texas, they light them. You, you can see them lit. 
And it's just the methane from the lower parts of that landfill. Just the gas being produced, right? And the heat also from the weight. The weight of all that shit. Pressure Most of that matter. methane comes from organic matter. Food waste. Yeah, mainly. Mo yeah, to, trust me. It's disgusting how much food yeah, Most waste. organic matter goes down the drain. No, right? it doesn't. It goes in the trash can. No, 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 no. Or you eat part of. Or I just said the same damn thing, but yeah. There's a lot My wife waste. throws away like banana peels and shit, but that's, you know, that's, most that's of it exactly is. That's exactly what we get. That's, that's organic waste. Yeah. Um, Sean G, the mistake Aaron is making here is he thinks all landfill creates methane. Yeah, no, they, no, no. Yeah. It, it definitely matters to where it is and how it runs. They have transport sites, they have. Um, Dry hubs, they have um, hazard an oven ways. Yeah, I mean they, an oven you throw out does not create any methane. Yeah, it's not the same. Why? Why do Sean? I'll ask Sean. Uh, demonic, hold on, just one second. Um, why do most landfills that you see across the country have a a pipe burning up top? They don't. Also, Maybe in your state. Uh, down here in Texas, I can there go find go. three. Exactly. Go find Different three regulations. Three Texas. Miles. Different regulations. Okay, yeah, okay. That, that'd be it, yeah. 100%. It, I can tell you right now, because here in California, you won't find one. Not one. Uh, that's why geez, we have, trans that's why we have transport sites. Because if they didn't have... Because the railroad sites, probably owns, uh, owns it down there. Because the railroad owns almost everything in Texas. I'm, yeah, pretty much. Um, I've I've worked on a few tips in uh, I'm, I'm Australian um, where we actually burn it off for power. Uh, they're mostly rural, but um, you can be done. You just have to. It does only work with food scraps, so you do have to sort it well. Um, Let me see. Okay, so oh, we kind of went away from it, but we're still talking about it. Um, landfills. I'm going to show you. This is one of the landfills that I managed all the dirt to come into. Um, I'm not sure if you can notice it, but this is in three sections, just like uh, or that w just like Sean was describing. Um, yeah, you you have to have a a what we call what we call a sit time. It had it had to digest is what we called it. Um, everything has to settle and make sure no pockets so are cut, released and the whole you nine. You cut the land first, right, Sean? No, this was a, no, uh, about 40, 50 years ago, um, on Camp Pendleton, they cut, this used to be an old shell pit. Okay. So basically they, what Pendleton does is after these shell pits are done, uh, they basically reuse them for something else. That's what, um, the con main contract that we had was done. Uh, they had a very, very large shell pit and, uh, we managed all the demo that goes on to it. But uh, back to the topic at hand. Um, yeah, so on for the um, this landfill. Or, there it is. So it's called uh, for for the layman out there, Sean. Not you, but it's called reclamation. We reclaim reclamation. We yeah. reclaim the land uh, from old shit. That's what excavators so, do. So that right there, this dark stuff. That's that's um, the liner. Um, at this time, because I, this is a Google map, but when I, when we left there, we were lining the, the southern end, I guess, on the screen, the bottom part of the screen where my cursor is, we were doing the liner in there. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to show you the, the piping, if you can see it from here. Okay, I can see it. So, there, where my cursor is, is, is going to be... Is that water? Uh, where? Is that water right there? No. Uh, that stripe, right? The dark gray. No, no that's the liner. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's so, way big along those lines. <laughs> so, I thought it, you know, looked like a pond. Where my cursor is going to be at is going to be every one of the the um, exhausts that are methane uh, exhaust that they have. Right here. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Screens. See these Screen little black over. dots? Yeah, yeah. We those can are, see them. Those Literally. are the outlets. Yeah. They're about. I they're, can see. Um, them. They're eighteen inch. You know the gauge pipe. It's like that, but yeah. it's white PVC. I'm just trying to give you the size. Well, some people don't know, but it's like eighteen inch PVC pipe basically, and that runs about a hundred and. 45 feet below the surface you guys are looking at right now, which is, if I remember correctly, when we yeah, left, so, we so were... This is a fill, right, Sean? You've already filled and uh, like put the membrane. Have you oh, filled and put the membrane? The, li the liner? In the piping? Oh, yeah, that years ago. So those pipes sticking up, uh, mm -hmm. did you guys put those in, or they were already there? or No, we didn't. Uh, company, so uh, those are stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Sorry, They're stacked on top of each other. It's leading uh, from the bottom of the pile all the way up through. So every okay. time we did a lift, every time there's a lift, they would add a section of that pipe, if that's what you're okay. asking, yeah. and then fill around the pipe, the PVC, not, rather than drill. They would just, we just compact around it. Sean, who put in the bottom pipe? The the one, you know, the one that runs very, up. very... So, Lowest Those one. pipes run like this. So they run from where they are down. So, yeah. right here. so this one runs straight down 128 feet and then it does this. And all all the pipes oh. do this. Every one of those pipes. And they're perforated so gas can get into them, right? Yes, they release them. So they run, so at the bottom, so in the bottom liner, the pipes are kind of like this. So they're attached long ways. And then yeah. I think it's every eight inches, there's a, there's a hole. Pretty, mm -hmm. probably pretty large. I think it's probably about a yeah. half inch in diameter. But yeah. every liner, every, every line um, that runs from the bottom out along, uh, or runs horizontal, um, has these holes in it so basically it just releases into it now every hmm, i want to say 30 feet, feet 20 yeah. or 30 feet it does this a little little t and that t it, it is the next layer and they run those layers then they run the pipe again we put uh we put silt down in between the line the pipes and on top of another piece of liner and then Go at it again. Hmm. And then yep. another 30 feet comes. They put another one. Yeah. So that's how you, even over, Even to the left, right? To, to catch all those other, uh, let's say, vertical pipes. Okay. So, they, so these, so the very bottom, these ones do this. Not a lot of them. There's very little. Oh, so it's okay. like... Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. these ones may do it because they want the I gas to be able to, to it, like it, it really does flow, <clears> to, <throat> you know, to the uh, path of less resistance, I guess you would say, and it yep. makes its way out. It uh, there is a abundance amount of that methane that leaks out compared to uh, what stays in there. You would where's the where's the outlet for the gas? Because here in Texas, remember I told you they burn it. They they'll light a flame. The atmosphere. But in California, how do you outlet that? You let it go into the atmosphere. They now they just... how you how your your piping runs, your liner, your compaction, because the kind of dirt you use and the amount of compaction you get mitigates how long it will stay in the in the ground. The more compaction, the better the dirt, the longer mm -hmm. it'll, the less methane release. Who, who's out there um, supervising you? The city? State? LA. LEA. It's a... Okay. Not, it's not the through, feds? It's ran no, by a city the... who is regulated through the state. Okay. But not the EPA. Does, does the EPA, EPA ever come out? EPA oversees them. And no, the EPA don't Everybody. go nowhere. They're just the boss. Yeah, I know. They, They're the ones that yeah, sit in the office waiting for the, the reports. 
They just mm. write you emails saying you did something wrong. So Sean, yes sir, would you uh, say one of those pipes is a container? Yeah, absolutely. So it could have gas pressure because it's a container, right? Yep. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, if it didn't have that that pressure, um, we pipes would be useless. <laughs> Something has to get those the, the methane to to drive itself out, basically. Hey, hey, Blue. Well, well, the the other thing about it is the reason why they run those pipes up is so that underneath it doesn't catch on fire. Yeah, so you don't yes. pressurize the whole damn county. Yeah, it, we would, it basically you would get a uh, a, a you know how a sinkhole sinks. Well, a methane bubble would. Oh shit! I guess it'd be the same thing where it, it's a, it makes the land rise and then it goes. Yeah, but it a can. little bit more anticity or more. Uh, hey, 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 blue! All all those pipes that Sean drew. Uh, mm -hmm. Where are they getting their pressure from? All the gas that is under the ground, looking for a way to get the hell out as it heats up. Okay, so away from gravity? Huh? Yeah, uh, it's, it's just it's pushing it's itself out. <laughs> that is light. Now yeah. I'm trolling. Now I'm trolling. I was too, but it didn't work too well. <laughs> I got your point though, Blue. I got it. I got it. In the US there, in the US yearly there are eighty three hundred explosions and fires due to methane at landfills. That's amazing. Wow. I had no idea. That, that's wow. how powerful your farts are, guys. Absolutely. It explains so much. So much. <clears throat> Open a window. That's why they say crack a window, right, Blue? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, back to back to something you guys were talking about early, though, Sean. I wanted to comment on it, and I didn't. I didn't get to it. Okay. Don't make it. Don't make any mistake about this, guys. The amount of energy and the amount of CO two that's generated in drilling for oil or gas or mining coal is absolutely minuscule compared to the amount of CO two that's released once that fuel is burned. Correct. So, don't yeah, but uh, all, all that it, CO two blue. Sorry, sorry, I'm trolling. Go ahead. It makes it makes uh, it, it's uh, it, it's almost inconsequential the amount of CO two generated just in in recovering the fuel. The the CO two generation is is almost entirely a result of burning that fuel. In, it's absolutely a result, right? It, and what, what upsets all... me is 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 that it, it's become a it's a million it's going to be a billion dollar industry capturing carbon. The problem is, is that it, again you're still emitting and using and using it for recovering of it. Um, and, and if, I guess that is the biggest slap in the face. All they're going to be doing is making money by <laughs> making their money. Well, you you know the same thing has gone on though, uh, and will go on and has to go on for every kind of pollutant that that you can mention. There was not any such thing as an environmental protection agency until 1970, and the first Clean Air Act was the Clean Air Act of 1970. Okay, 70. Oh, I'm thinking of the Montreal. 19, I'm thinking 19, Montreal. Yeah, it's 1970. Uh, and that was the uh, legislation that led to 40, my 45-year career uh, in air pollution control. Uh, oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. A, oh, so, you, now, so you've just been now, sitting quiet about this, haven't you? I have. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't say I, I can say almost nothing about oil and gas because that's not the end of it I was involved in. Mm. I was involved strictly in, in coal-fired uh, power plants primarily uh, and maybe, you know, uh, other industrial processes that uh, emitted uh, solid particulate. I was more involved in that than the, the gaseous pollutants. Early in, the, early in the game, I mean, the first regulations had nothing to do with SO2 or NOx or mercury or CO2 or any of this shit. 
the first regulation was about particulate. Mm. We didn't have any way of capturing even sulfur dioxide in those days. In 1970, it didn't exist. Uh, but the instant that, that the uh, demand for higher levels of collection efficiency for particulate matter uh, kicked in, you immediately have to burn more coal to generate the electricity you need to collect the damn particulate. So there's always going to be that. There's always a price to pay. Same thing happens with SO2. As soon as you, as soon as you say, okay, you guys got to cut down the SO2 emissions, so you're going to have to put wet flue gas desulfurization systems in. Bingo! Huge amounts of power go into the, into running one of those things, and you got to generate that power by doing what? Burning fucking coal, of course. So that, you know that's always a part of the uh, that's that's always a, a part of of the of the overall problem. But you got to make your mind up. Do you want do you want to try to clean up the atmosphere or not? I Blue, think, were you? Uh, but I think, you know, hang on, Aaron. Hang on, Aaron. I think one of the that's a good question, and the issue is I think they're doing it in reverse. I think you have to cut first, then your solutions come more apparent. Yeah, the the. The overall and long run solution, uh, long term solution to this is to get away from uh, burning any damn thing mm -hmm. to generate electricity. To get away from burning any damn thing to make your car go down the highway. Big Blue, were you working mostly with, uh, let's say, uh, corporations, uh, production uh, manufacturers, or were you, work, was your studies general public? Is all I'm I saying. I worked for a manufacturer, a manufacturer, a uh, little small company you might have heard of them, General Electric. Uh, My grandma worked there, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I never heard of them. <laughs> actually, when I started, are they still around? Gee whiz. Yeah, yeah GE is still around. Of course, they are. They always will be. They're they're huge in uh, I know, I know. gas turbines. They're huge in tur well, They're one of the three biggies when it comes to turbine engines okay. for yes, aircraft. Sir. My grandma. They do all that. They do all that kind of stuff. GE's had their fingers in everything. They've been involved, of course, uh, since day one in power generation. Obviously. So let me uh, ask you. I'll go back to my question. Uh, I love GE, but uh, what was your studies or your uh, focus there? What you just told Sean and and the panel focused on more corporate. Um, um, mm. Use of fuels and and the burning of them and the the um, cause the uh, reaction or cause of you know or, or was it more geared toward the public? Which one? What what it was geared toward making the equipment that removed either particulate or gaseous emissions. That's what we were doing. Okay, so you, we built the equipment. But for corporations or for cars, let's say. For uh, it was geared toward General Electric so they could make money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, John. Before, before General Electric, uh, we were Alstom, and before that, we were Acia Brown Bavari, and before that, we were Combustion Engineering. Mm. I mean, it goes did, back a long way. Did you work for GE? Blue? Yeah, the, when I retired, when I retired, it was from GE. But they—that's oh, cool. because they bought uh, GE bought Austin or the uh, everything, all the North American operations yeah, of right. Austin. And so, in your position, um, educated by GE, apparently they put you through training. Uh, I'm guessing. I went, through, I went through engineering school, Aaron. No, I didn't. It, it, no, no, no. I, I know, they, but you also they didn't train me. Yeah, I, I might have trained them a little bit. It wasn't the other way around. Okay, okay. But you went through GE's protocol of what you were uh, hired to do, let's say, once you were bought out. And uh, was it more geared toward corporate um, emissions or public emissions? Aaron, we sold equipment primarily to uh, utilities. Uh, we sold equipment to... Uh, I know iron, and steel, iron and steel uh, uh, operations. We sold equipment to the pulp and paper industry. High it, energy. Yeah. That was the, our, 
Our big clients were always public utilities, people like Southern California Edison. Not necessarily, not not necessarily Edison, because they uh, they got a little problem out there with coal-fired power plants. They don't have any fucking coal, so they don't make coal-fired power plants. Yeah, the closest one to <laughs> to uh, Los Angeles, I think, probably was Mojave back in the days when it was operating. That's that's just a blank piece of ground now. But yeah, my, our clients were people like Northern Indiana Public Service and Louisville Gas and Electric and Tennessee Valley Authority. Sure, East Coast. Southern Company, Southern Company Services, or yeah, or uh, Texas Utilities, or God, I can just I can go on forever. We had your, uh, uh, we had a lot of clients. Yeah, your role there was uh, analysis of energy consumption and. Uh, nope. My role there was to uh, uh, design those systems. The <clears throat> General Electric um, non-coal-fired plant system, such as dams or... No. Okay. No, no, he was, he was building the scrubbers. <laughs> he was designing the scrubbers that were that were going for the the coal fired. Um, my, my specialty uh, product uh, for me the the product line I had had the most to do with was uh, a thing called an electrostatic precipitator, uh, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of that stuff. But in addition to that, I've I've been involved in wet flue gas desulfurization, dry flue gas desulfurization, selective catalytic reduction, non-selective catalytic reduction, um, carbon injection, lots of, lots of stuff. To, to yeah. achieve what? Uh, not, I'm being ignorant right now. Uh, you you uh, gave a lot of terms. Um, what do you mean all the sulfur injection and sulfur? What, what was the... Um, Wet flue gas and wet flue gas desulfurization involves uh, taking limestone, grinding it up, making it into a slurry, spraying it into an absorption tower. Uh, that's the, the the flue gas from the boiler is passing through, collecting what that e collecting that effluent in a reaction tank below, forcing it to oxidize and ending up with gypsum. You mean a coal-fired boiler? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so coal what, what was the end result uh, in your time there? Like, uh, not the end result of your time, but uh, G's uh, motive to to do that, to reduce emissions? To make fucking money, period. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. That is they the only care. objective we had. That's right. We, they didn't care about emissions. From a from a business standpoint, we could give a shit about the emissions. I Absolutely. could care less. What I did care a lot about is how much money we could make selling the equipment that reduced the emissions. You now I'm being I'm it, being right? tongue in cheek about that. Of course, I care about the uh, uh, keeping the atmosphere clean. Of course, I do. Yeah. But nobody does it out of the goodness of their heart here. No, I know, it's, I know. And you were there oh to my, sell it. This yeah. is business. This is this is pure business. It's done for it's done for a profit. Well, no, for GE, it's profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were there to create it, test it, uh, retest it, build it, and sell it. That's about it. You know, <laughs> and, it, and it, hey, that's how the economy grows, man. I ain't, I'm not poking you. I don't know. So, Sean, back to climate engineering. <laughs> yeah, now that I've killed the stream. <laughs> <laughs> One of the people saying in the chat, I wish this guy would shut the fuck up. Probably me. They're talking about Actually, Blue, I, I had a question about that. It, it, you know, with was there anything that that they came up with that was better? You know, had had a better uh, production rate 
or reduction rate, I should say, uh, oh. use, using less less energy? Yeah, we were constantly doing a, uh, doing de uh, ongoing development work of, on, the, on those product lines to try to reduce the operating expense because, you know, that would be part of the bid. Uh, when you talk about... Uh, about this stuff, you're talking about installations that could go hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? And that's not taken lightly by anybody. They would have, um, uh, a, a public utility would have an architect engineering firm, a, a really big company, that would write a specification that might be, you know, 500 damn pages um, that you had to respond to. And the evaluation process would always uh, involve, um, you know, meeting the re the removal requirements for whatever element we were, we were trying. We were the equipment was designed to take care of, but more than that, energy consumption, consumables, you know, stuff like that, maintenance expenses, all that kind of stuff gets uh, gets evaluated in these uh, in these bids. And if you want to win, you got to stay on top of the game. So we were constantly looking for ways to make them more efficient, make them use less energy and, you know, all that sort of thing. I worked in R&D for about five years. In your position, Lopez, there, um, was it more about energy efficiency? Or <laughs> I, I no, you guess it's related. Less gotta, loss. Yeah, we've got a you got a removal efficiency. If you're talking about particulate, uh, the the restrictions for particulate from a coal fired plant are generally stated in terms of pounds per million BTU. Uh, that's thermal input to the to the boiler, yep. uh, and the restriction limits would be uh, from the EPA would be maybe something like 0 0.03 pounds per million BTU, but the client would frequently say, no, no, that's not good enough. I want it to do 0 0.015 pounds per million BTU. I want, because I want some leeway. I want some leeway because, I'll tell you, because they would say, hey, I want some leeway if something goes wrong with part of this thing. I don't want to have to shut the plant down to go fix it. I want to be able to continue to run to my next scheduled outage. So I want it to be able to be capable of overperforming. So you guys were skinny. You're just skinning <laughs> power plants, basically. Making no, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, it was skinny. highly competitive, and it's not. Uh, it's it, it was one. Of, it's it's one of the uh, low lowest margin businesses you could be in. Mm -hmm. Get right down to it in terms of making money. Nobody got rich at that. Trust me. Except GE, but yeah, that's what no, I mean by GE. Didn't get rid that's why GE's not in the business anymore. <laughs> or not a big name anymore. No, I, they, they're out of it. Uh, Who bought them? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say it had to be, it had to be a pretty terrible business to be in because, didn't you know, it? the regulations get tighter and tighter every year. So everything has to be, you know, uh, taken down to the next level. Well, the, regulation, the regulations have gotten to the point, Sean, that uh, I can I can say it with with pretty good confidence. You will never ever ever see another coal fired coal fired power plant built in this country. Not a new wrong. Did uh, Boeing buy G, or did they just uh, what do you call that? Distribute. Uh, no, nobody bought it's GE. GE okay. Nobody bought GE. GE just got out of the air pollution business. That's all. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah effectively. They, they just effectively got out of the air pollution. They, they still do a little bit of stuff they do. They, they sell spare parts and they piddle around with uh, a little bit, little bits of things. But mm. it's pretty much over at least uh, domestically now. I don't know what they're doing worldwide, but... Isn't it? I mean, yeah, we don't want a monopoly, but GE was huge for my family, your family, uh, millions of people's family, you know, through World War One, World War... Or maybe not World War One, at least two, for sure. Um, you know, just huge... Parts of there are parts of General Electric that are truly great and have always been truly great. I've got 
uh, tremendous admiration for their uh, uh, for their turbine engine division. I mean, yeah. they make they make some of the finest jet engines in the world as far as the gener electric generators and turbines. You know, for the for power plants, they're they're as good as they come. For for stuff like uh, uh, the air pollution equipment, they they had no business ever ever even getting into that shit. They didn't want to be. That's we were the second time that they that they uh, bought a company out, only to figure out that it, it didn't make enough money to sue them. So they just said fuck it and got out. Yeah, but their pre precision engineering is uh, awesome. Yeah, they're they're a world class company for sure. Clearly. Yeah, they. Didn't they get into the uh, the wind powered turbines and stuff like that? Oh they hell yeah! Working yeah. with that. Yep. Gas turbines. They they built. They are the the Mac Daddy of the gas turbine business. Yeah. Combined cycle. Hersigs, all that stuff. What a cool company, man! Yeah, if you. If you visited a, uh, a GE facility here in the U.S. every day of the week, I think it would take you about eight years to go to all of them. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Well, this is just friggin' huge. I, I don't mean to say this wrongly, but what a huge footprint. What a huge footprint, Sean. <laughs> yeah, you, you do have a mighty large footprint. <laughs> Take you eight years to visit all of GE's companies. Oh my. They're not emitting any. I don't know where the conversation was at just now, so I don't want to make a comment. Oh, no worries. You think Westinghouse would have been that big if, if they didn't have their, their little tumble right after World War II? Because they, they were right up there with General Electric. I don't know, Sean. Hard to say, right? It just is what it is. Right, Sean? Well, te Tesla, uh, Westing, uh, Tesla used to work for tes uh, Westinghouse. Um, and the uh, the uh, Niagara Falls, up at the Niagara Falls, the dam that was built up there. He was the one that built all the turbines for that. Westinghouse or Tesla? I, I, I actually would like to do, Both. A, uh, do a stream soon on Tesla because I've heard things recently that kind of bring light to why maybe somebody would assume he he invented this free power thing. But uh, I, I really want to look into it because I don't know much about Tesla. But uh, I hear a lot of both sides, what he's done. So just wanted to throw that out there. Well, when as he got older, um, he, um, you know, he kept stating that there there was free energy that he could he was working on free energy and stuff like that. But he got very eccentric as he got older. He also died penniless, pretty much. He was also, Sean, I think uh, the research I've done, Blue, or you, y'all can correct, you know, but it was the same as radio waves. If you can um, transmit energy through the air to a tower and then back down, we, we wouldn't need wires. Is, isn't that kind of what Tesla was going at? Well... Yes and no. He was uh, he was pulling off of the earth the earth's um, uh, electromagnetic current uh, is from what I remember reading. That's what he was attempting to pull off of uh, to to create his uh, so-called free energy. Yeah, the inductive field. Um. Possibly. Makes sense. Aaron, do me a favor. What's up? You don't have to play dumb anymore. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> it's very obvious. Because you come up with these questions that are beyond a, a, a troll's ability. 
I'm not a troll, Sean. So far, so good. <laughs> now, I know, Channel X, you wanted to come in for a reason. I didn't really understand your, your, your tombstone comment, but... Uh, yeah, have you been reading the comments? No, I never read the comments. That's why I say you have to tag me. I see them. Golly. Well, put it this way. <laughs> if I read the comments... <laughs> Everyone yeah. on my panel would hate me because I would never be in the conversation. That's right. I can, I've tried. Trust me. I can't uh, read, just... type, and, and chat at the same time. I'm not capable. Okay. Plus, Sean hates typing. So I, ha I really do. See, that was, a, that was like was... a best friend comment. You knew something. <clears throat> that was cute. See? Oh, yeah. We're good again. Just don't piss me <laughs> off. And stop super chatting me. I don't even care anymore. Looks ridiculous. You make it look like I'm making you do that shit. Eh, whatever. <laughs> I do appreciate okay. it, though. No, it's just uh, really weird. Well, first, what side of climate change are you on? Well, there you go. Right. So I have to be on a side? Yes. I, well, it doesn't mean there's only two. Because I'm, a, I, I'm okay. on the third side. Because climate change is happening. It, it, we are part of it. How much? <clears throat> I don't know. And and is it that dire? <clears throat> wow. I don't know. We're we're pretty okay. smart, and we do adapt quite well. Okay, so I will just give you. Uh, all I did was I just basically reposted what um, Mandelbrot said. Hang on one second. Hang on. Give me a second. Hold on. One. Two. Like I'm giving you two now. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. I've given you five seconds now. You said a second. Bad negotiator. Never making a deal with you. It's like almost 30 seconds. We're not doing anything until he's ready. That means nothing, chat. Okay. I'm All sorry. right. Hang on. I got to. Turn all, everything back on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. You were just waiting for me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Uh-huh. That made everybody I wait. I, I even turned everything <laughs> what? off. Everyone, they had black screen <clears throat> until you came back on. Oh, I feel so honored. I think <laughs> Channel X wants to uh, argue with me, actually. This is no. Aaron. Aaron. No, I'm just, I'm really, honestly, I know I shouldn't, but I'm just like, I can't believe the level that people have taken it to in the chat. Like what? Climate yeah. change deniers like you are a threat to our future, says Mandelbrot set. Uh, and here we go. Okay. Mandelbrot set. All right, what does that gibberish mean have to do with your denial of climate tra change and therefore sacrificing our future the profits of fossil fuel companies? Okay, then the question would be... Okay. What is your... Right, wait, 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 not done. Yeah, hang on. Well, Could you please your note... Well, hold on. Could you? Here's here's the next comment. Could you please note that you are a climate change denier on your tombstone, so that my descendants will know where to take a shit. Really? <laughs> uh, I mean, do you actually type that? Oh yeah, they'll, they'll type anything in the chat. Okay. But what side do you are you on? Oh my word. Okay, that's just. I didn't even know. Uh, sorry, it's just like uh, it's amazing. It's just, I thought it was just incredible how fast I suddenly became a danger to society, and they don't even know anything about me. Anyway, sorry. No, uh, what side? Okay, so the climate is changing. Of course, we're affecting it. I mean, we're dumping how much junk into the air. Of course, we're affecting it. It's stupid not to assume that, not to believe that. To the degree, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. To the degree that they say, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but it is political, is it not? 
if it's so political, then why? If it's if it's all scientific, then why would it be political? So it's very, well, it's very, uh, particularly when people say stuff like that to you. I mean, well, uh, people people want to sure be political. Make sure I put climate change denial on my tombstone. <laughs> what the heck, Aaron? What is wrong with you? I'm Aaron, about set. Thank you what? for the super chat. Stop super letting me in. Stop super letting me in. The fuck? Why are you even mean? accepting him? Because uh, he hasn't been trolling. If he's not trolling, I'm good. He apologized right. to Brenda and everything. It, he did it through a super chat like a dumbass, but yeah, that's Aaron. Apparently, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron is falling. I'm just. First of all, that's just uh, that's unbelievable. Um, and then second thing is, um, what does it matter what I believe? It's Wait, what I. It's what God I, damn it. Are you fucking what? eating again? No. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I apologize. Continue. <laughs> the heck? I thought I heard you eating again. <laughs> no. I'm talking. <laughs> I apologize. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, I, here's, here's the thing. You're right. They can type anything in the chat. Uh, people are um, anonymous, so they're, they're free to, to type anything. Um. So now I feel like I have to defend myself. But anyway, okay, so you know what? Actually, I don't care. I don't care what they think. So yes, of course, this climate is changing. Yes, of course it is. But the climate has changed before. There used to be um, ice fairs in, um, oh gosh, Aaron. <laughs> I don't, th hey, hey, Sean. God damn it. Just, let, let, him, let him do it. What? I got, I, 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 why, by why law, stop him? <laughs> just, I have, because I don't need it. And <laughs> what? Don't need it? Of course you need it. Channel, I want you to understand. So far, Aaron yeah. has super chatted me 90 fucking dollars. <laughs> That's, That's just ridiculous to me. There is no reason for that. No, 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 no. Thank right. you, Aaron, for the super chat. Man, I'm man, Bala, uh, Earth is flat. Thank you, uh, he say, Aaron. He say. He say. Is it is yes. it? Hold on, Mandelbrot said. Call me a baller. Yeah, call me a baller. Is it propaganda you uh -huh. spread? You keep your support the fossil fuel industry inside of your head. No one would care. Golly, no. What it's just that? interesting because it's no. What Mandelbrot is just absolutely de has declared me a uh, public why enemy you, number one. Why are you reiterating what the chat is saying when because we're I, on a live I, show here? I, I, I know, I, but this I, is I bizarre. Did, I did ask it's him. To heck been, been bizarre. Okay, sorry. 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 Well, wait a minute, Aaron. Completely you super chatted. Mind. You super chatted so so that so that Sean could say it. Uh, there. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm that, gonna turn that. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that. Right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to say. Uh, Channel like bring bring up a point. Wait, something see, we can talk about here. I don't Are, think. Okay, know. I see. I see what he's saying. So I don't think he says the fossil fuel shills made it. Pu fossil fuel shill. I'm a fossil fuel sh fuel shill. I don't think shills. Would no, make it no. Political. Okay. I think I, I would Spongle. think it'd be. Uh, it's just that the politicians have their fingers in it. It's not yeah, political. of course they do. It's all about money. It. Yeah, it's all it about money. It, it, yeah. It's it's not about the science of it. It's about money. And the but reason, I, the main reason, Trump is such a climate denier because if he becomes a if he go goes with it he loses money if he denies it he makes money right but you i mean his his thing if this if this is the, the level you take it, it's taken to immediately there's an issue if it's, it's not about what i do um nowhere in the chat did someone say hey are you are you recycling? Are you what steps are you taking uh, personally in your life to ensure that uh, uh, there isn't um, a lot of plastic waste, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? None not of that. The question. Yeah. It, right. The question is: Do I believe in climate change? Do I believe it's it's in my mind? If it's not in my mind, they want my mind. That's what the, the point is. Yeah. They want me to believe climate change. If I don't believe it, regardless of what I do, it's um, what I believe. It's absolute, apparently. Yeah. Right. So I have to believe what you believe. Even if, if I recycle everything I ever use, if I drive an electric car, immaterial, it's what I believe. 
Yeah, because your neighbors don't. So then it's your problem, right? Well, no, it's just that it's just that even if I do all that, it's because that's not even brought up. So even if I do all that, yeah, that's still not enough. I have to believe. Yep, yep. You have to be the sole survivor. Right. Okay, so I have to, I have to, I have to, make, I have to make sure that I vocally oppose Trump, for example. So uh, if, I to, if I were to come out and say I support it's Trump, it's kind of the rhetoric. So, so, uh, it's kind of the rhetoric. Wow, Mar Marty, um, Marty Moose in the chat has been yelling at me. Yeah. To share this graph from a YouTube link, and I'm go to it I don't now. Need to see a graph. Holy crap! Thank you, Travis. Ether band, not the curve, is the word. <laughs> Ether band is the word. Shout out to Travis. I'm going to get like a, a robot, like a little robot Shout assistant to that Ether. reads those. Mandelbrot, here's, here's the issue. It's the fact that you you took it to that sort of level. That's insane. That's not that's not even that's not even an argument but, anymore. But, but, but you you like, cross the line. But they're in a chat, though. I mean... Right, but okay, think, but don't you, you don't think, think that that's have, you've not seen you've not seen how people behave when they're uh, when they are um, picketing. You're not seeing how, how people band. behave when they're when they when they uh, march in the street. It's picketing. Climate, climate, hey, it's climate. Trump, oh. get him with your car. Either Pretty simple. <laughs> right. If they get in the way, hit him with your car. You're good to go. Get, see, see if they think their okay. lives really matter. It's, it's, yeah, bye bye. All right. Ether so what band. I'm going to do is I'm going to go block, and then I don't have to read it. There you go. You just blocked Boom. him for that? Yes. Damn. You, yeah. That was crazy. Cra Mandelbrot. Crazy. It's that's crazy. Just, okay. So crazy. wait, 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 wait. It's crazy that I blocked him. Crazy. Not, not crazy that he said he wants to shit on my grave. He's a he's trolling you. Okay. So I don't want to be trolled. So I don't want to read it. So but I want to read the chat, but I don't want to read that. So I blocked him. Well, Why don't you discuss what that, Mandelbrot that uh, yeah, has? Yeah, it is. It is, 100%. Yeah. I agree. Okay. <laughs> so he can, read, he can read I, my stuff, but I won't be able to read yeah, his stuff. I, I, I stated my opinion, and you, you heard it. That's all I need yeah, to Thank you, Sean. So, no, yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. I don't care about that, because that doesn't affect, that doesn't that has no impact on me. Okay, That's, so... Um, that graph. I don't... Okay, Go ahead. so it's kind of hard to have... <laughs> so we're looking at Greenland Ice Core Studies show extreme climate changes at the uh, whatever in Heliosin yeah. trans okay so basically at the uh the arctic line or the time period i mean um okay so marty uh, i suggest you type fast <coughs> and explain why we're looking at this wait well have marty get on why did who blocked who marty said someone blocked him I didn't block him. Hey, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mod, but he's a mod, so I can't block a mod. Yeah, you can only. Well, I can. You can only time I can, him out, or. No, I can't time it out. I can't I, time. I don't know. Out. I can do everything. So. <laughs> yeah, you can do everything. I can't. I can. All I can do is I can do some like block. It, here's the thing: is, is, I um. You know, some people are able to handle, you know, abuse like that. I'm not. Some people just shrug it off. Some people don't. So I, th I find that completely, just completely abhorrent. Someone would say that. Um, oh, now Marty's like, fuck the graph. What the hell? I don't know. She's getting so upset. Wait, who are you fighting with? Marty? Or... I don't even know at this point. Huh? I'm not even sure what the graph is saying. Yeah, this is why I wanted mic. Marty to say something. Gave me the timestamp and everything, and then just now said, "Okay, never mind." Fuck the graph. Yeah. Okay, it shows that the temperature has gone up. Yeah, um, I okay. agree. Temperature going up. All right. So if, here's the thing: if <laughs> okay, good, Marty. Uh, Marty's been fine. It's just Mandelbrot was just completely out of. I didn't even know what. So I just like no, sorry. You may as well be a flat earth at that point, just shouting flat earth at people. Or, or I think maybe the graph went up. Maybe he thought you were a climate denier because exactly. of the comments. And it took absolutely nothing for that to happen. It took nothing for that to happen. Um, a, major a major problem I can see with that graph is it's years before present, which, is start which ends at 1950. Yeah. Say again? 
Uh, I'm gonna. I'm bringing it back up. Uh, years before present is uh, ending at 1950. That's what before present means. Mm -hmm. So that graph isn't showing the bulk of modern global warming. Yeah. So that would be uh, pre. That would be. Well, yeah. The years are right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at From if you look at the pattern. So before look, look. industry is what this is. That, that zero is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but it says it says present global warming, and that isn't the present <laughs> global warming because it's before present, which it, it ends at nineteen fifty. It's not going positive anything. So, uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I am old enough to remember that they said there was another ice age coming during the seventies, and that we had to do something about it. <laughs> Where does it say nineteen fifty? Yeah, that's what I'm looking. For. I remember. I don't know. Before present, when was the, when was this uh, global uh, this cooling graph? Remember that? Yeah, yeah global. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. He <laughs> says there's another, another graph at twenty one hundred. I've got the list. I've got a list right here, and I could spend uh, the next hour reciting quotes from the press, um, describing various calamitous situations. Here we go. Uh, I'll just do. I'll just do two. Los Angeles Times, October. I'll, I'll just read it. Uh, L.A. Times. Fifth ice age is on the way. Human race will have to fight for its for its existence against the cold. That was Los Angeles mm -hmm. Times, October twenty third, nineteen twelve. Uh, so, Charlie in the chat says the people that said there was another ice age coming was the news, not the science. Okay, the science reporting, the, the, the science as reported by the news. It wasn't the news. The news well, just make where, up stories. They were reporting what the science was at the time the was LA, stating. Who is the LA Times quoting? No, wait, 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 wait. You'd have to find that out. But who do you think they're quoting? I don't know. <laughs> Scientists know they, say, know, no, here well, we go. Well, here go. They, here, here's they make one. a lot of quotes that aren't really real quotes. Well, that's true. Okay, here we go. Scientists say Arctic ice will wipe out Canada. Professor Gregory of Yale University states that another world ice epoch is due. He was an American representative of the Pan Pacific Science Congress and warned that North America could disappear as far south as the Great Lakes uh, and that huge parts of Asia and Europe would be wiped out. Chicago Tribune, August 9th, 1923. Oh, that guy's a kook. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. I want, I'll just give you one more. Mysterious wait, wait, warming wait, wait. of the you climate. Know who Michu Mikaku is, right? Yeah, Michu, yeah, Michu they, Kaku. Yeah, yeah. See, they're kooks now. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Here we go. I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. A mysterious warming of the climate is slowly manifesting itself in the Arctic, engendering a serious international problem. New York Times, May 30th, 1947. Dude, they didn't have technology back then. They have no, exactly. They've got, they've, they're all over the place. Blue. They're all the, Blue. It's one after the other. Quotes in, going in all your, over. In your, in your, <laughs> in your, in, when you hit this century, was technology good enough to, to make those predictions? They made them anyway. <laughs> what do you think they're going to say in 50 years time about our technology? What the hell has that ever stopped us, Sean? <laughs> yeah, when's that stopped the press from, from you know? Here you go. I, just, I, just, I swear, this is the last one. You guys um, hear what you're saying, right? In 10 years' time, uh, in 10 years' time, most of the low-lying atolls surrounding Tuvalu's nine islands in the South Pacific Oceans will be submerged underwater as global warming, uh, global warming rises sea levels. CNN, March 29th, 2001. Okay. Right. You do know we we are losing ice. Yeah, but uh, is the South Pacific Oceans, those islands, um, yeah, all yeah, some submerged? Of those islands are underwater now. Yeah, they are. Yeah, there's yeah. actually they did this. Uh, yeah. What channel did it? They did a um, a big story. I'm talking about on TV um, about an okay, island. Then, of, <laughs> then I have was, no case. I think there was <laughs> a population of five thousand or something, maybe less. I think it was a little bit less. But um, yeah, the, the, over the years, they had, their island is is sinking basically. Um, last, and this was like five years ago, and at that point, they had lost thirty percent of the island, and it's happening quite so, rapidly. Degradation. So uh, here's here's what I was trying to convey. I, in the hold on, real quick. Is that due to erosion, or is that due to increased water level? Um, increased water level. It's it, it's a okay, mixture so of increased water level and and um, their location. It's just not it. 
I think they're sure. like right in the middle of a current of uh, the current and something playing. I got to look it up again. There's a bunch I'll of factors of it, it though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, but there. part of the part of the uh, part of my question then would would follow up with if, if there's a if there's a certain amount of increase in water level that would be worldwide, not just an island. Yeah. You would see it on an island way before you would see it on the coast. Remember, the coast of everywhere is not the same. Not in your world, not God mine. damn it with that. You're oh, in, no, your here we world. Go. in your world. I right. live in San yeah, Diego. No, Travis. on the East Coast. No, Travis. Uh, Travis, if you go down the East Coast and you are measuring the East Coast, by the time you reach the end of the East Coast, you go back and the land has changed. That's how the okay. coast works. That's too generic, uh, Sean. I, that okay. doesn't have any. How about that doesn't this? have any meaning. Here in San Diego, we have well, nice. What sand. do you mean it has no go, meaning? Uh, yeah, yeah. As you go north, it becomes rocky, and then you go into Northern California, and you have cliff sides along that's the ocean. That's just topography. That's, that's congratulations. I, it's, yeah, you're right. Topography. It has yeah. everything to do with why an island would sink compared to you not your house being flooded no. when you live ten miles from the ocean. No, 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 no. That's not uh, what I'm saying. I'm saying, hold on. Island. I, I'm saying, let's let's do this for for instance. Let's just say we've got uh, an, an up, island. In the, let's say we've got an island in the middle of Lake Tahoe. Oh, oh goody. Okay, and that island starts to have an increase of water level. That water level is going to affect every shoreline on Lake Tahoe, not yeah, just the island. Yeah, but the shoreline is dictated by the lake. Whereas an ocean, the coasts are going to be vastly different. Where okay. the lake again, so, the lake, the lake does not change. The lake doesn't have currents like that. Doesn't have uh, water breaking along its shores for years. It's not the same thing. Okay. Again, my point is is that if you have an island that has an increase of water, yeah, you're going to have shorelines that have an increase of water as well. And yeah, and you do. And, and no, not, Travis. No, ice does not melt. Sean, be, I'll be right back. Sorry. Well, one of the biggest issues with what you're saying, Travis, is you're, you can't use a lake to compare to an ocean. One big reason, tides. The reason... No, 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 that, right, no, don't, no, don't no, miss the, the forest to, for the trees. Don't miss the forest for the trees. Excuse me? Don't miss the point that I'm making. Oh, yes, no, I don't think that's what ice, you said. But, ice um, melting increases tides. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, the, the water level goes up, tides increase. Swallows islands, but yes. non, doesn't register wait, wait, in wait. Santa Monica. But you're telling me that an island, which, again, has, is dictated by its surroundings, so a lake... Where the shorelines don't change very much because there's not enough actual, you know, there's nothing happening enough. Whereas an ocean or a shoreline with an ocean, I mean, we can, gee, I live in California. We have cliff sides that are 50 feet back now, or 50 feet um, that had eroded and, and are gone. So, I mean, the reality of it is, is that the ocean is different from a lake. Now, when you have a land that is surrounded by that water, then the land is dictated by its surroundings, so therefore, if the water isn't still, or at rest like you guys like to say, then it's going to play a factor. And when okay. it rises, those the currents and the tides that are, trust me, a lot worse out there than they are on a coast because yeah. they have more energy. Okay, listen, yeah. hold on. I think uh, Travis was talking about the Philippines, Hawaii, Malaysia, uh, the Grand Marquis, uh, you know, those islands out in the ocean. Okay, he wasn't so actually talking about the, the, islands the, in a the distinction. The distinction that I think I, I'm hearing you say, if, if you're not, but is there's a difference between erosion, where the shoreline is uh, being eroded so that the water level does incrementally increase but that's only in terms of distance and yes. erosion it, the, that's not the distance same thing. inwards it in, right right in, but yeah. hold on no, right, right, fine. Let's, i get you okay so so let's say that there is no erosion but there's an increase in water level that would have to be the result of an increase of water in volume but again your lake is the lake 
Yes, it's surrounded. It's a lake. It's contained. Okay, forget, and an okay, ocean forget is the not, lake. Since you, so, the same way. hold on. Since you're not able Travis. to make the, Hold on just real quick, Sean. Since you're not able to make the connection that I was trying to make with the lake, I was drawing an analogy. Forget about the lake. Don't bring it up anymore. We don't, we don't need to... to well, it's, it's two different things when it comes to water level rise. <laughs> Go ahead, Sean Smith. So, Travis... Travis, up in up in Washington State, the sea walls that they had built um, uh, along the shore have been moved back be and raised up because the water level has increased. Okay, then the increase of water level would happen everywhere, not just in that one location. There's no way that there's there's no way that's possible. So the I'm reason why they have the saw the the reason why they have the seawalls there is for uh, shipping purposes. That's but, not, that's irrelevant. Where, but uh, you no, know, it is relevant. That that's Sean the man-made uh, part where it has to be raised up. Sean Smith, where at in Washington? Uh, near Seattle, Bremerton, Tacoma, Elliott. Yeah, up near up near uh, Seattle. Everett. Up near, near Seattle. Up near Seattle. So how do you yeah. know? So you're not from Seattle. No, no, I'm not from Seattle. Okay, but you know they moved the seawalls back. Yeah, yeah, I've seen okay. pictures. My my friend lives up there. I've seen okay, pictures well, of I'm it. I'm from there, and they they're not moving the seawalls back. They did true. move the seawalls back. You can see the old one, and you can see the new one. Well, reconstruction, the possibly. Yeah, reconstruction of a seawall, possibly. <laughs> I would like to know. Okay. I'd like to okay. have a, a question going. answered. I'll I would like to have a question answered. Go ahead. By, by anybody. Um, has my uh, actions in my life contributed any more or any less than any of the people in here to this uh, sea level rising? Yep. Nope. Yep. Yep. Uh, probably way less than mine. I've said this nope. before, and this is a great analogy. I, only I, drop a piece of trash, it is nothing. If everyone on Earth drops one piece of trash, it becomes a landfill. Yeah. Fine. If do mean you think sea that, level... Do you think... If mean, next question. If mean sea level uh, drops or rises, think about what Google Earth is going to have to do. They're going to have to reconstruct the globe. What are we looking at? What's that mean? Oh, Everything's well, gonna be Aaron, fucked up. Aaron. It's all gonna be fucked that up. That was, that, was, that was terrible trolling. That was yeah. Yeah. You, you, that was my best that, trolling. John. That's gonna that cost that. you another twenty dollars. That was no, it's not. And that was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was not your best. That was trolling. That's a good twenty-five. I think that's twenty-five. Yeah. Okay, so 25. Sean, you 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 brought up the <laughs> issue of landfill increase, right? <laughs> But Channel X was asking about the sea level. Yeah. So how has he contributed to the increase of the sea level? How say that? I didn't hear specific. Him. Go ahead. Go ahead. My question to follow up Channel X, or or to follow up your response to Channel X by, he, so Channel X says has has ha, have I contributed to the increase of the uh, sea level and you said okay if i drop a piece of trash it's no big deal but if 10 million people okay that's that has to do with terrestrial <laughs> terrestrial he's asking about aquatic so um, no it, how would plays, he, it, it it has everything to do with it. it's a system not just one thing it's plain truth is travis yeah yeah hey hey travis um hi hey how's it going um Sean, is it a closed system oh, or an open? <laughs> I believe it to be. I believe it to be a open system, um, but I see well, then, why it's a closed system. Well, then it's, the piece of trash closed. I drop has no effect on. No, that's not. You know, gosh. What's going on here, right? You, you obviously yeah. didn't hear. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm trolling again, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, w I was just uh, simple. It's very, very straightforward. Um, if I fly the average amount that people typically do in their lifetime, or and if I use the same rough, roughly the same amount of resources that everyone else in the United States uses, um, 
then then what is it about my then my political opinion or my opinion about the cause of climate change uh, makes me a threat if my actions are net or the, my net actions are roughly the same as yours Good point. at what point at what point does it become a, necess a necessity to demand that i believe exactly as you do regarding the science behind climate change if my actions are roughly similar or the same as yours that's my question well, the and question no is, is do you believe the science of, of whether it of whether it's real or not? Yeah, but uh, Channel X actions are nowhere near Boeing, Microsoft, yeah. GE, Amazon. Uh, you like going for low because you lie about All climate people, change. Lows. Because you know I lie about climate change. I know. Seriously, I lie about climate change. Tell me how I lie about climate change. What do you know about what I know about climate, or think about climate change? Other than you believe me to be a climate change denier, and you want to literally shit on my grave. <laughs> Tell me, Mandelbrot set. Are you talking to Aaron? No, I'm talking about Mandelbrot <laughs> set. I think he spoke to me. Okay, okay. I think it you was deny a, it. Oh, so if so, I have to. It's a case of denying something. It's a case of something to be denied. Like you deny that climate change occurs. I have to be a believer, is what you're saying. Otherwise, I'm a threat to humanity. That's what you're saying. Regardless of my actions, I have to believe it. That's what you're, that's what you're saying. You're literally saying that. No? You deny a threat to humanity. By producing roughly the same amount of trash that you do? You deny a threat to humanity. By using roughly the same amount of trash and resources that you do? Mandelbrot, Mandelbrot. He, Does that make any sense to you? He's trying to What you produce says, has nothing to do says, with it. It's your propaganda it that's it dangerous. Doesn't, it it doesn't. This is Aaron. He's... he's, he's I'm drawing a red herring. He says, you deny. Right? None whatsoever. Like, that is complete so, madness. So that you're going to that. force me so to believe exactly as you point, do. Keep on your point of, I throw away the same trash you do. Okay? But he says, you deny. Actually, I was, I'm in the position now where we have, two, we have two bins. We have a recycling bin and we have a trash bin. And we put... We fill our recycling bin, and our trash bin is almost empty every week. You're denying known facts. Right? That, doesn't, that isn't enough for you, is it? I drive a fuel-efficient car, and I hypermile. Do you know what that hypermiling is? Hypermiling is, is basically driving so you get the absolute maximum possible fuel economy out of your car. I, I drive a very small car. You that, drive one of those fucking smart cars, don't you? No, no, no. no. Not a Prius or anything like that. No smart cars. Blech, nasty little car. No, I drive a Civic. That's just a and I, car, but, uh, I, I drive and a if, Cool. And if I'm very carefully, I, I, can get, I can get over 45 miles a gallon out of it. No such thing as a smart car. Anyway, go. No. So, so those actions still qualify me as a threat to humanity because I don't believe politically exactly as you do. Not even politically. Just even like I throw my trash away. So do that's you, just, right? That's just that's not even bizarre. I if I am careful, actually, I only produce no, uh, a liter actually, of urine a day. So what? Actually, uh, actually, uh, was my question is: Is Channel X is yeah. do you deny the science behind it or no? That's well. That is the interesting question, isn't it? Because then you're saying the science has to be believed. It has to be believe or denied, and you have to put me in one I, or two of the camps. I just realized, and that, and on, just it doesn't matter what I do. That I realized. You haven't even answered that question yet. Exactly. I know. That's what, exactly. I, that's what, I've, that's what I've been trying to ask. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> See, here's the thing. And all of those, all of you those. You don't have to believe science. All of those. Science is proven to be true. All of those revolting, vile comments that you left was before you even found out what my beliefs on the science are. I, I would consider you a class <laughs> here with that answer. <laughs> no. See? 
doesn't matter. See, exactly. It doesn't matter what that's my like, actions that's are. Like it's what I believe. Gay. But you not answering that is like when you mm-hmm. answer, I'm not answering when deliberately. You ask, when you ask a flat earther yeah. something and they don't want to answer you and you get all derailed about it. Okay. 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 So, so you, you, yeah. So it's a similar sort of thing. So now I find myself on the other side of the fence. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, now right. I know how a fat. Now I know how a flat earther feels like. No, you don't. No. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> okay. No, no it's quite. Uh, okay. Being, being try to spread. A okay. Climate denier is nothing like being a flat earther. <laughs> you have no idea what it feels like. You have <laughs> no idea. Close. It's not even close, dude. I wouldn't even. Nope. Okay. I That's almost like got triggered just now. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, this is good. This is good. No, this is an interesting conversation. A lot upset. It's just wow. The stuff you typed in that was just golly. <laughs> that was nothing. That wasn't very, that wasn't, I would consider that like with your answer, I would have yeah. have gone that far. But uh, that mm. wasn't that. I've seen so so much worse. I mean, I know. Do you I know. see the comments about Travis's ether ban in there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can understand him flipping the fuck out and shooting everyone in the chat. So, Channel X, <laughs> what is causing climate change according to you? Yeah, why are you laughing? Yeah, why are you guys laughing? It's because it's funny. We're not taking it seriously. Oh, you take it seriously. That's why you're laughing? No, I said it because I'm not taking it seriously. So, the topic is not serious? No. Okay, so what's your point? What's what my point? I just. What do you mean? What's my point? I don't have a point. You don't have a point. No, we're just talking. What's okay, what's good. the point? What's the point of you leaving twenty dollars super chats? Because I love Sean, dude. <laughs> there you go. He's a cool well, guy. We do the same I'm, things. I'm coming. We, in this we track actually I have stuff in common, unlike me and you. Hang on, give me give me about two minutes. I'll be right back. Break up? I don't know what's happening right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, we're gonna break up. It's, it's an online breakup right now. Channel X, what is causing climate change? Quit avoiding can, the question. Can you, I'll avoid it for another two minutes. Give me a second. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, are you telling us to hang on again? Because if you are, I'm muting everything. Just talk amongst yourselves. Uh, Channel X, uh, you can't run away so quick. Right. Uh, I can if my wife sends me a wave emoji. Well, oh my god, a virtual fucking hug. You gotta run. Wait, what just happened? All I heard was virtual hug. Channel X had to run because his wife sent Channel him a X virtual d- hug. Channel X doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I can see that he is seriously avoiding answering that question. Mandelbrot. Yep, what's exactly. Your point? Yeah, what? You speak up, Mandelbrot? Mandelbrot, are you there? I will. I will start. I didn't hear that. I just said uh, Channel X is running away because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I, I also want to clarify that I did make a mistake by calling Channel X you, and I'm sorry about that. Your point. Uh, go ahead. Try I'm here. Or yeah, I, I will start to be concerned about climate change when uh, industries are uh, curtailed on how much uh, carbon footprints they are putting out. They are. No. Are, wait, wait, wait. They, no. they are, but it doesn't matter. No, no, no. I mean, like, seriously, like, shutting them down. Oh, no, that's never going to happen, ever. Well, then I don't give a shit about climate change. I can agree. I can see why. I think, well, you should because you're paying for it. Am I? Yes. Yes. There needs to be a carbon tax. No, there should not be a carbon tax. All the carbon tax does is make more money for them. They already make the subsidies and the the profits on that on those fossil fuels. Climate change is a business. Bingo, Sean. Yeah. You, you, I, I agree with that as well. Climate change is a business. Uh, Travis. Yeah. Sorry, Sean. What? Travis. Uh, Sean. Who is them? Was um, geoengineering. Fossil fuel companies, lobbyists, uh, Sorry, politicians Aaron, involved in it. Yeah. Geoengineering, you know, like yeah. 
Travis, you, you, right? That's yeah. Sean's topic. He's actually yeah. topic. Yeah. So they are the ones who pay the tax. Who? I would, I would like to know. Oh, the fossil. Hang on, hang on, Aaron. Hang on, Aaron. The fossil fuel companies. Yeah, they they pay taxes, but they also make more in subsidies. Not to mention the carbon tax, the carbon market. They're able to actually sell and trade their their, their carbon credits. Yeah, it literally yeah, is a, a money grab. It's literally what it is. They got countries that don't even have enough economic structure to have a power plant that have well, credits. the subsidies should go away, but the carbon tax makes them pay more and everything evens out. Okay, well, they stop getting all the subsidies. We start paying the tax, not both. Because the subsidies are question. supposed to save them because they're not, just in case they go under, because not enough people may not want their, their product. Everyone wants their product. Why are they getting subsidies? Why isn't renewable energy, why aren't they getting subsidies like they are? No, we don't pay the tax. They do. No, no, no. We are going... There's, oh, uh, you there's, pay it. There's you a pay it at tax. the pump. Yeah, there's a carbon tax that gets added on to everything now. Not to mention, they're going to add, like, for instance, um, I, I read off a little while ago, they, they literally are going to be selling the states a geoengineering insurance. Where You don't think the states are going to put that in our taxes to make us pay for it? I bet there you is will. no carbon tax now. Get out of here. What the fuck? Can <laughs> oh, man, there's many states that are paying it. I'll pull it up right now. Canada pays it. Why is anyone... I, I have a question, though. Why why, why are uh, oil companies getting <laughs> subsidies? Uh, hmm. Money? Because the politicians are investors as well? That's bizarre. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that would be about the United yeah. States. Uh, that would yeah, that would happen yeah. if I was king. That would happen. Well. Yes, they should have no subsidies. You're correct. Okay. Am I yes, am I okay? You, did, am I good in your books now? Am I okay now? Because I don't believe oil companies should have subsidies. In fact, I don't think there should be oil companies. I think there should be like two. Just like how many? Twenty. I got a question. I don't think, you, I don't think anyone should that. be driving There's... a fossil combustion engine car in 2019. No, you sure. stink on ice. Chen Lex, that wasn't the point when you left. Uh, hey, what were you saying? Uh, what were you going to say, Blue? Hang on. What were you going to say, Blue? No, I said I had a question for the panel. What is a carbon credit and how does that work? Anybody it, know? Yes. It is the allowance of emissions that they are allowed to produce in a year or a fiscal year. Yeah. Per yeah, what? Cubic meter? The, the amount of emissions. Yeah. yeah. According yeah. To Mass emissions, okay. Um, the Carbon issue, credit's very strange. But yeah, the, the issue with that is is that they're able to sell and, and trade their, their, their credits. And, and why do they do that? So that other companies that are producing too much can are allowed to produce too much. What? Right. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. That's how it works. But then, how is it if so? You have to if, pay. So, you have so, to pay to do something illegal. So what you no nothing. They're not doing anything illegal. Yeah, it's, it's a matter illegal. of it. It is a matter. It, it, there's a, a downside to it because uh, you can easily end up shoving a lot of emissions into one one center like one localized. That's why area. you need a carbon tax China. to get rid, rid of that but, shit. The, yeah, but, but the carbon China. but the carbon credit idea is. Uh, is a is a way that a company that would prefer not to build or invest in the capital equipment necessary to reduce the emissions at their specific facility can buy credits from someone who is doing much better than they needed to do at their facility. Now, can you find a problem with that? Yeah, it keeps, keeps yes, com it gives yes. companies a way out absolutely. of having to 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 meet standards, basically. Right. That's well, what no, I no, no, no. What if, no. Just a moment. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then, then it, then you wouldn't have any problem with a company that is doing better than they needed to, simply saying, "I'll tell you what." Then we'll just shut twenty-five percent of the shit off. Well, it wouldn't what bother about you. Right? Producing as much as you can, being as productive uh, as you can. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, I, as as I mean? in a way, I think BP, Exxon. I don't think making, the carbon credits making, have ever worked. 
if they're making billions, they deserve to make their billions or <clears throat> they are a company. Um, but it's the, at the cost of who, I mean, you know, ultimately so. we are the ones paying f to you watch them so. get rich. You realize this is nothing new. We've been selling oh, yeah, and trading yeah. pollution credits for since the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's that. I think now it's so, such a, so normal that I think that's why it is. It's still going because hey, it, hey, it was blue. like like you were saying. It's it, yep. carbon taxes came at a time when it was we and pollution we, keeps we, increasing. Well, that's, that's the issue. exactly. I was just going to ask Big Blue. We've been selling yeah, credit since the eighties. Yeah, but and what pay... has pollution done in your uh, math or Go, you know, gone down dramatically? gone down oh, dramatically on. absolutely it doesn't work. I absolutely i I, I, would, I would say i haven't seen a notice i haven't noticed so anything. If hold on hold on real but quick I also live is, in, go ahead go ahead go travis you were trying to say something yeah i was just gonna ask big blue if pollution has gone down then shouldn't climate change threat also go go down that's that's not that's not what we're talking about yeah, I, aren't they aren't they correlative question now aren't they correlative um we have done you, you realize when we're talking about climate change i don't know how it works in your world travis but in my world <laughs> i see what you did but, there but, but, in, but in my world but there. in my world travis, <laughs> uh, uh, climate change is caused by carbon dioxide we have no is regulations that for that We've not been able to collect this. Okay, so the exclusive the exclusive cause of climate change is CO two. That's it. Yes. And what's Carbon the cause? Dioxide. No, the of course cause? it isn't. What is the cause of the increase of carbon dioxide? Us. It's a, a buildup in the atmosphere. No, that's a non-answer. That's a non-answer. Okay, how do we then? If you say it's us, then okay. So what is it that we are doing that greenhouse is, gases cause climate change? What causes what greenhouse? He's asking. What are you what driving? What are you driving? Yeah, it's okay. You're you're missing my point. I'm really surprised no, that you no, don't no, know no, where wait, I'm wait, going wait. with this. No. What do you drive? No. What are you driving daily? Why do you ask questions to answer questions? <laughs> because you can answer your own question if you think. <laughs> yeah, and you should know where I'm going with this. Okay. Pollution, pollution, Sean. Oh, you're trust trying me, to say I never that know where you're going with You're something. trying to say that my driving, therefore, that increases CO2, which therefore increases I the greenhouse drop, effect. Hey, I drop a piece of trash. It's nothing. We oh all drop God. a piece of trash. It's a landfill. Fuck. Listen, <laughs> fuck. Listen. Be Listen the change. To me. Be the change. Listen to me. Is that trash pollution? Yes. Yes. Does that pollution cause CO2 increase? Yes, because yes. there's more. Does more, that increase more, the hey, greenhouse hey, ready, effect? Ready, ready, no, ready? no, stop. Heavy stop. I'm coming all the way back around. No. No, no, I'm go, coming all no. the way back around, people. Okay. Go, go, go. Okay. I hear you, Blue, Travis. Blue said pollution has gone down. Yeah. Pollution is the cause of climate change doesn't okay if it's no, skyrocketed, no, if, if it's at 100 right. and it's down oh to 90 god. does that make it zero? Oh my god <laughs> yeah that's right i, I didn't say it was forever. zero yeah you made it sound like he said it went down and it was wrong no no i'm asking all i had was a question that didn't sound and, like and a question. we got back we got back around to the a, fact that you asked pollution. an extremely broad, uh, an, an extremely broad question, and I gave you an extremely broad answer to no, it. No, my, my question was not the very broad. You was talking about <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> broad. engineering yeah, because it's, it's, you don't know what you're asking, Travis. Yeah, this we're not you're, talking about talking, the ether change. <laughs> if you're talking about if you're talking oh, about <laughs> <spend> <laughs> a particular matter, trolling. Yeah, if you're talking about suspended particulate matter in the ether band, yes, it's gone down tremendously. If you're talking about SO2 emissions, yes, they have gone down tremendously. If you're talking about NOx emissions, it wasn't, it, listen, yes, this wasn't they very have gone difficult. Down. None of this is. None of these are greenhouse gases. Listen, please, buddy. please listen. Please no, listen. you listen to me. I'm not huh? finished yet. We have Travis, mercury listen. emissions. The the use of activated carbon injection. 
that that has reduced the mercury emissions tremendously. Yes, pollution has gone down. CO two emissions have not. What I breathe CO2 I breathe CO two. Hey Blue, I breathe CO two. You it's a generate CO two by breathing and yeah, I by breathe using it. oxygen. You generate CO two. Exactly. And so does so does nature. Everything how in the relative parts, state of CO two upon the Aaron, earth. Aaron, how many parts per million do you inhale per breath? Uh, Blue could tell me. Actually. I don't think anyone could tell you. Yeah, well, it's carbon uh, dioxide. So I breathe oxygen. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I breathe it out. We're good. We ought to get Riley to tell us about the carbon gas and the Please dioxide, no. right? That would Please be no. Beautiful. That would be so beautiful. I would love we need Riley that. here. We need Riley Let's here. Let's do that. What is, wrong, what is wrong with oxygen, right? <laughs> CO2. What is wrong with that? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did you just say oxygen is CO2? That's <laughs> carbon dioxide. No, he was implying that oxygen What is wrong is with in... CO2? Uh, I'm, I'm made dioxide. from carbon, apparently, because no, they can carbon said, date me. You, so yeah. wait, 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 wait. So are you saying that carbon dioxide is the same thing as carbon? No, I'm saying that uh, the sure? molecule like. of CO2, CO2, mm -hmm. is not harmful to me. What is CO2? What is it? You're breathing it. What is it? You are CO2. What is it? You are CO2. What is carbon dioxide? I dated carbon blood? once in high school. She oh, yeah. had big hooters. Oh, yeah. What do you think is in your blood, Sean? Sean, or, mm -hmm. God damn it, Aaron. What <laughs> is CO2? <coughs> carbon and no, two no. molecules. What oxygen. is it? What creates CO2? What is it? Pollution. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Pollution! <laughs> the worst Sesame Street <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Shut up. P O L L U T. Okay. It must be pollution. That's what. That's what. Today's is. show was brought to you by the letter C <laughs> and the letter O. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you live from the ether band. Okay. <laughs> See why this Absolutely. is not. Absolutely. This is not as serious. Ether band, not the curve, is the word now. <laughs> An unreal place, <laughs> like Sean Show. Shit, might as well just go full on stupid, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, this isn't reality. Uh, like hey, Travis, have right? you heard? It's carbon dioxide. Carbon. That ether band is the with... word. I have. Yeah. It's the word that no, you heard. The curve is the word. No. No. Hey, do you yep. know ether isn't even a real thing, so therefore your world is empty? Sean, let me troll a little bit. Come on. Carbon okay, dioxide. Aaron, Aaron, Imagine Aaron, that. Aaron, you have done a great job. I'm in the last 1520. <laughs> troll away, my friend. Thank you for not trolling the rest. Or thank you for Big. attempting not. No, wait. Not against Big Blue. Don't disrespect him. I'll kill you. Oh, damn it. Well, right, if if, he, if he doesn't okay. first. I'll let Travis go. Go, Travis. Go, Travis. Go, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I think you. I think Aaron and Travis should out, try to out troll each other. Let's see how that goes. I can't. I can't do that. I can't. Oh, like, a troll off. Yeah, troll. infighting. That's that's not possible. That's, I don't, I don't know, know do what that. a troll is, Travis. What is a troll? And it begins. A troll is a pain <laughs> in the ass. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it somebody that accepts money a troll to allow is a, someone to pass, kind of like Sean did tonight? <laughs> isn't I mean, Sean a, a troll? A, a troll is a smart ass, pop off, pain in the ass, just being there to no. just cause trouble. No, what about trouble? the troll under the bridge? You know, the under the bridge troll says, "Hey, you can't pass unless you pay the money." Okay, right? you, you you know those trolls under the bridge? Yeah. Well, I. Paid Sean some money. He let me on. He's the troll. Is that how you he saw let it? me pet? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll kick you off. <laughs> no, no. Stop. You got to refund the money. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell him to send it. He didn't get in here because of it. 
I just want to know what kind of troll we're talking about here. Because you told me, Sean, you said me let me and Travis troll a little bit. So we're going to talk about it. Right? Well, it's kind of boring right now. You guys aren't very good. I can tell you that. Okay, big blue, big blue, big blue. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, just is... remember what I said. I'll kick your ass off here. No, no, no. I, I love big blue. He's got very good knowledge. Time for you're talking shot. about the annoying kind of troll like you. <laughs> Am I breathing... Oxygen and carbon right now, and if I am, big blue. Wait, carbon. Could those molecules, especially because carbon is so oh. active, <laughs> wants it to get to everything. Wait, am I breathing wait. CO2 right now, big blue? You said. Go. I'm so confused by what you just said. Are you? Were you at a coal plant today? You. Uh... You're, you're most, the nitrogen. You're most certainly breathing uh, carbon dioxide right now. But let me ask you this question. What do you think your body is doing with it? Oh, uh, creating energy. Nope. Yes. I think your body's nope. probably trying to drop it out of your body. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, wait, wait. Big blue, sorry. Let me uh, ask you this. Small uh, scale? On a small scale, I say I'm creating energy, meaning moving my arm. But yes, uh, on a biological scale, you go. From the so. CO, you think you're doing that from the CO2 you're breathing? Absolutely. Uh, you're absolutely wrong. Oops. So why do you <laughs> breathe? Well, you, bur you breathe our atmosphere, and um, about 78% of it is nitrogen. Uh, twenty-one percent of it or so is oxygen, and the rest of it is all that other shit, which includes uh, carbon, CO two, yeah. hydrogen, little helium, uh, methane, all the other trace all the other trace gases. I know you already said that. So I just gave you a hint. I don't think we can break all down it, nitrogen it, molecules or CO2. You don't break down anything that's in that 1% category either. The only thing you're using is the oxygen. Kind of like if you eat a, piece of, if you eat, uh, a lot of food, your body expels well, most of it and takes what it can or what it wants. So blue is it saying that I'm expelling nitrogen and carbon and uh, all the other stuff. Not right? carbon, hopefully. Yeah. If I'm, you're expelling I'm carbon and you're on fire, we need to put you out. Okay. A lesson so on the the breathing. Thank you. What's the point about that? Hmm? What's your point about that? No, you, were, you asked me if you were breathing carbon dioxide, and I'm telling you, yes, you are. And your body's doing nothing with it except taking it in and shoving it right back out again. What's happening Along with a little bit more carbon dioxide because that's what your body does. Yeah, what's happening to the carbon and the nitrogen and everything I'm not expelling? You are expelling it. Your body is using the oxygen only. Only for sure. Pretty sure. Okay. We need the good. Well, unless you smoke, here. and then. Yeah. You'll have all these other gases in your bloodstream and and dissolved. Uh, where, where does dissolved blood come gas, from? But, huh? Where does methane come from? I thought we figured out it was cow burps a while ago. Methane is natural gas. It comes right Carbon out of the ground. Carbon monoxide. Choke yeah. my thoughts away. <laughs> what? This is great, though. Uh, Blue, so the oxygen that I intake, you know, I breathe in. Um, it goes into my lungs and it goes into a bloodstream that it 
filled with iron, apparently. Iron. Um, mm hmm You got a lot of iron in your yep. Can can we can we go on from there? Like how why why does my body, your body also, um, only take in the oxygen to uh, fulfill the bloodstream to my heart. Right? <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> we, we, uh, Aaron, stop digging rabbit holes, okay? <laughs> we, we've been I'm, down you, enough you of them. Say that when I breathe in, it's only oxygen. How do you know that? You don't you know that. I'm breathing in nitrogen. I'm breathing in carbon oxide. Well, sure, are you breathing in everything, everything that's in the atmosphere? Aaron, obviously, yeah. there's nothing special about your nose that separates that like fucking oxygen. Of course, Aaron, not. Aaron, I have a question. What, what shape is the Earth? Give me. Do I have choices? Or? <laughs> what is the shape of the Earth? Do I, do I have a choice or? Yes, pick one. Okay, yeah. Tell me, give me my choices. What are, what, what shapes are? There? Okay, its sh its shape options are cuboid, spherical, roughly spherical, um, Key flat. I like flat, keyboard. Keyboard flat. Yeah. Or random marsupial shaped. Flat, flat is not a shape. Keyboard. Flat, flat is, is not, not shape. a shape. I okay. choose keyboard. It's keyboard shape. Okay. All right. No further questions. <laughs> no, it's not that funny, is it, when somebody asks you? It was funny for me. That's all that counts. Um, Conversations died. Demonic, demonic, what shape is the Earth? That's like saying. Uh, I, I started the 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 warning already. Uh, we got like five yeah, minutes. Okay. Oh, good, John. We're gonna go for a while. Demonic, is what the, shape uh, is the Earth? Uh, or uh, I, my timer's going, but if you guys can keep it going, uh, I'll, I'll keep recording. I don't care, but. I'm I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Is the shape of the Earth oblate? Yeah. What is oblate? How do they How do they know that? How do you not know measuring, that? Measuring it. Okay. How How did they measure it? With a uh, with a meter stick. Yeah. Okay. Wait wait, you, wait 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 wait. Are you giving me wait, an wait, honest hang on, answer? Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Blue. How did they uh, measure the Earth back then? No, 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 no. How did they measure the oblateness? How did they okay. how did they measure that? that? That too. We have a panel. We are on a panel. Right. So the panel can answer. They used a yardstick. <laughs> Simple enough. Okay, I, I don't I don't take that as a serious answer, so all, right. else all you gotta do is all you gotta do is measure the equatorial diameter and measure the polar diameter. Yeah. And that gives the difference. Was it 34 kilometers difference? That's something like that. Yeah. The French geodesic expedition measured the oblateness centuries ago. Oh, really? And if you photograph it from space, you can see it's not it sounded like you perfectly spherical. When, when you oh, you're you're choking. Choking. Can you, can you, you bring up you, a photograph of who, are you, <laughs> you. who do you mean can go up? What did you say? What? <laughs> I was asking Channel X if he could produce a, a photograph that, that uh, shows the oblate. Oh, I'll yeah. show it. Yeah. yeah. Every one of them show it. Yeah. Oh, Every, yeah. And just pick sorry. any photograph from Earth from space. Yeah, sorry that the photograph from space, your face only sees it in 2D still. I like good. that, Sean. That was good. a good thing. Good luck, good luck detecting the... 0.1% oblateness with your naked eye. Yeah, the great scale negator. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Isn't it? It that's right. Looks. Yeah, it's 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 spherical. I mean, it's it's as good as makes a different spherical. Saying it's oblate is just futile. Just say it's a sphere. Be done with it. Should, Travis, don't make me bring that basketball out here. <laughs> yes, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Very slightly wider below the equator than it is above the equator, too. Uh huh. Yeah. 
so wouldn't the uh, wouldn't the land have to bulge as well, or is it just the water? The hell? The land have to bulge. The earth is mostly water. Land the bulges surface. anyway. That's why we call it land. That's just topo- that's just mm-hmm. topography. So yeah. there there is yeah. isn't there uh-huh. isn't the answer, there's the answer is yes. Yes, isn't there yes. supposed to be a fort? Isn't it supposed to be like a fourteen mile no bulge? <laughs> what the hell are you talking no, it's 30. about? That's what I. That's Land what bulges I heard. as well. I'm Ooh. asking. I'm asking. Minor There's inches. No need to laugh. Same number, just inches. Excuse me. I don't. I don't know, I Travis. I think it does. I think it is something like that. Something. Something along those so, lines. So, so Sean is laughing at me, but you're I'm now trolling. Confirming. Shut up. <laughs> well, how how am I supposed to know that you're trolling? I thought you were I don't honestly like laughing. No, I was laughing. You said, Travis, you said bulge. That's why Sean's getting all you know giddy. Uh giggle. Okay, the difference. <laughs> it's pretty here damn great. Well, that's why you don't see it. I got it's it. Not, I, I got it right here. Yeah. I got it right here. The difference yeah. is twenty-one kilometers. Here, here's the thing: that fourteen miles okay. is still minuscule to the size of the Earth. That's on the radius, right, X? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, difference, 21 kilometers correspond to the polar radius being approximately 0.3% shorter than the equator radius. Yeah, so here, here's my suggestion again, and there's no way for me to necessarily prove it outside of just stating it, is that the, the uh, supposition that there is an equatorial bulge is simply a mathematical expression. Nobody's ever measured it. Except that they measure it, that's how they know. No. How do you think they arrived at the mathematics? Been measured, Travis. Sorry. No, it's you, you, no, you get, it's, you get no. the measurements first, okay, hold then on. you have okay. the numbers to plug into your mathematics. Okay, hold on, just real quick. Let's let's just say for instance that the equator was a solid band. It of, was um, measured by the French expedition and satellites. Thanks. Thanks, Mandelbrot. So let's say for instance around the center of the earth is a strip of land which on either side is water, but uh, the, the equator is basically, let's say, a mile. We'll say it's a mile strip of land all the way around, okay? That, okay. Would, have to, that would have to bulge, right? That's where you're fucking this up, Travis. It doesn't do that. That is not a, that's not a, a hump around the middle of the earth. That is a smooth transition pole to pole. Okay, but you are saying though that there is a twenty-one kilometer. It's twenty-one kilometer bulge. No, I, we're saying that the, it's twenty-one. Uh, what did you say? Twenty-one so, miles, X. Twenty-one no, miles. No, twenty-one kilometers. Or, all right, 20, twenty-one kilometers. It's twenty-one kilometers radius uh-huh. larger if you measure around the equator than it is if you measure around the pole. I have a question. That doesn't mean took, that there's a... You took, yeah, it's not a big fucking bulge. If you took your basketball, uh, put your hand on the top of it, and push down a little bit, that's what it is. Okay, that's good. Idiot. I have a question. How would tides... You know you know the uh, lunar uh, gravitational uh, effect on the water? How would lunar uh, gravitational pull affect a spheroid... In what what sense? What are you talking about? Well, I think it would be uh, quite different, wouldn't it? You know, the gravitational effect on the water. It, you know, if there is a, you water know. is attracted by gravity. QED. Okay, so already we have 21 There's kilometers. no QED in that statement. So already we have 21 kilometers at the equator, uh, you know, bulging out. How would the moon um, pull that back in to give a tide to, let's say, Europe or Alaska or South America, you know, Argentina, the tip, Cape Horn? down there like how right it does make a noticeable difference you can check any tide map and mm-hmm. see there's all different tides all over the place all different tide heights yeah so, we know that yeah and they don't make sense with a yeah, U-E-D is latin 
for. So there, you bastard. No, I know <laughs> what QED means. I said, what was your state? What was QED about your statement? You made a statement and then said QED. I'm asking you, how was that statement QED? I didn't. I didn't ask you to define what QED is. I didn't ask you for that. That water is attracted by the moon. What do you think? No, no, not okay. When you said QED, what uh, were you yeah. saying? Definition, please. <laughs> That's what he's asking you. When you when when you basically basically I'll, I'll help you when you when you say I was water saying is water attracted. is attracted by the moon therefore the moon causes the tides QED yeah, ips, yeah ipso facto circular reasoning there's tides therefore the moon is causing the tides there you go QED no yeah you didn't prove anything you just associated a correlation and presupposed the correlation is the cause that's not QED thank you good job Travis. Well done. Yeah, he's trapped. That guy can sit down. Who is that, yep. Mandelbrot? Yep, this? yep. Sit down there, Mandelbrot. Sit down. Okay, then why do the high tides always occur during the new moon and the full moon if it's not caused by the moon's gravity? Correlation is not causation, my friend. It doesn't matter that well there's be. a cause. <clears throat> Plus it's oblate, so, yeah. Go figure again. Do your math. One you more time. Do you have a better idea? Yeah, so in, in your no, world, I, don't, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Your world, Travis, so the answer is no. Yeah. Then we're just going to go with the moon causes tides. There. <laughs> better idea. Uh, go ahead and do that, but just don't tax me for it. No, it was, I think we will. You evaded my question. That's a good idea. Moon tax. We ought to have a fucking moon tax. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> moon <laughs> gravity tax. Blue, you're on to something. Absolutely. We need a fucking moon tax. I don't know Aaron's going to pay it. Sure. Tidal tax. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one that pays around here, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and you still get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Sean. God, Are we married now? What the fuck? <laughs> That's okay, though. Hey, hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. No worries, though. I'm a dirt worker, dude. Hey, I'm a dirt worker. We make money. No worries about it, dude. I moved one yard of dirt to pay for your fucking super chat. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Uh, this is good. This is funny. It's not funny at all. This is not making you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> You should come work for me, Sean. Make oh, with your ass. Ever in your life, say that stupid shit. I'm serious. Wow. I just tried to hire Sean. Yeah, and I just got done teaching you what, how to fucking bid a job a month ago, asshole. I know. Now I make money. Come on. What is the Where's flat my earth Where's cost my percentage? of tides? Yeah, there you go. That's a good Honestly, question. What do you mean? Where's your percentage? <laughs> he he <laughs> just came to you in the super chats. <laughs> oh, is that what he's doing? You might as well okay. ask what the flat Earth causes of seasons. We we don't have to answer that question. We don't need to answer that. I don't need to know Excellent. what the cause is, right? What? If I if I'm a farmer, yeah. If I'm a farmer, all uh -huh. I have to know is when it's best to plant my seed. And when it's best to harvest, I don't need to know what causes spring. Um, actually, you need to. Uh, you wouldn't, I guess, you don't realize this, but farmers actually look into and study the climate um, reports and the data That's more than anybody. That's not the cause. That's not the cause. Yes, they do because they also. Why do the tides at, yeah, always match stuff. up? And the seasons with the real Earth why, why explanation. Does it get light? Why does and it get flat light earthers have no explanation. Why does it get light when the sun gets close to us? How does that work? Why? Uh, why? It rises. It's correlation, it guys. It's, it's just correlation. It doesn't work that way. Okay. It's just correlation. Okay. Travis. Travis, you can go through your entire life believing what you want to believe. But if you come to ask questions about it and then we give you an answer and I'm you deny it. I'm not asking the question. You're asking the question. I haven't asked a question. When does the Mandelbrot sun did? get close to us? Why doesn't Mandelbrot it get did. larger at that point? 
how come if I get closer to the sun at 11,000 feet in the Sierra Nevadas, it's colder, but I'm closer to the sun? You're higher in the atmosphere. I'm closer to the freaking heat source. No, you're not. Really? Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. How come, how come <laughs> Travis... Uh, no, no, please, please explain to us. Why, why does that happen, Travis? Have you heard me make a claim? I'm trying to get you to make one. Or did you just I'm not going to make a claim. No, no. Well, Mando, Mando, no, Mando, you just don't want you on Mando. Mando, 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 Good. And if no. you talk about almanacs and farmers, they don't are they aren't logging the cause of spring equinox. Or They're not blow. logging the cause. Yeah, that's true. They're just logging the pattern. Where do you evade all questions? That's what, because not what I, I was don't talking have about. answers. I don't have answers. But I don't feel obliged to to give you an answer if I challenge yours. Well, go away. Come back when you have an answer. I don't need an answer, Big Blue. That's your world. <laughs> well, hey, good. Travis, Get out of it. I'm going to yeah. give you a heads up right now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Travis. I'm doing a Travis's World No, but people stream have stream answers. Soon. What's wrong with you? At some point, I'm doing a Travis's World stream. Just so you know. Because you've said that so many damn times. We're gonna. I'm gonna kind of piece together your world. I've got a rash. Okay. Hey Terry, how are you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah, that's observation. That you you don't want to know the cause you, or anything. A hell of an icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> hey Sean, if well, I don't want to know the cause. I could have probably. Hey Sean, any. if you sell tickets to the Travis World Stream, I'll buy them. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, they're still on got a one ninety nine ninety nine. Okay, it goes to Travis, right? Huh? Yeah. No, not at all. Not one penny. No! Oh! <laughs> Have I got to pay this moon tax before I go any further? <laughs> I am not down for the moon tax. I swear to God, I am not. I don't like that. Yeah, but you're looking at it, Blue. You're almost there. I don't want to... I do not want the moon tax. They move the atmosphere... Of the Earth into the moon's orbit, right? So, what do you think's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna get a moon tax. We must well get a sun tax. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I'm not paying a moon tax. Wait, wait. The moon is receding at like two centimeters a year. There's no way in hell yeah. I'm paying a tax on something that's not going to be around. We ought to be getting money crap. back. The moon is not in the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. If you if you give me money for the moon tax, I'll try to bring the moon back. We need reparations. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you give me the moon tax, I will bring the moon back. <laughs> you just what? This conversation. How many years? <laughs> what? How many, how, many, how many years? How many years? How many years can you? What is uh, space? What is I'm space? in the research and development aspect of it all. Oh, I'm past that. <laughs> I'm far. I'm past that. We're in the the field study stage at this point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can I see your working model? Huh? Can I see your working model? He wants for he wants photographs of you, girlfriend. You want to see us working? Okay. What is um, okay, space for? We'll I, I, do I didn't it. know I you. Know. The idiot we, that said we, that the moon is in the Earth's atmosphere. I did. What is your proof of that? Uh, the amount Existence. of atmosphere in which we have that is extended past the moon. I'm sorry that at 14.7 psi here on Earth's surface, you understand Earth atmosphere as that, but it still is beyond us. And the moon is in a, they found particles in which our atmosphere consists of. So therefore, that's why they. It is not proof. What? National, national publications. What do you need as uh, proof? Science, do you need someone to go out there ideas. and breathe? Say that. So. Of course. Yeah. 
All right, guys. I I'm tired, and I I, and I I'm only gonna get angry at this point for no well, reason. Fine. I, like, fun. I, I, I like Metabot. I, I'd like you to come back on more because you really you trigger channel. I like you that. should read more than just the headline. Damn it! Oh. I got triggered for a while. I'm okay now. You should come on tomorrow, Metabot. We can have this discussion. Well, I, <laughs> I, I like you. I think you, you trigger channel. Uh, you I like your comments. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, I think I'm gonna make a, a shit on channel X meme. Uh, I got I got tombstones. You know that, right, Channel? Thanks. That's just great. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. Thank you. But I mean, I'm going to. But I not, have this huge delay on. of like 20 seconds. It's hard to contribute. Are you listening to us on the YouTube? Probably. Matter of fact, I know you are because I just did my time the countdown, and my countdown was 20 seconds behind. <laughs> <laughs> or the stream was 20 seconds behind my OBS. So. Uh, yeah, you should probably listen to the meat hangout. It probably would help. He should be in front, then he could answer the questions before we ask him. No, the other way. <laughs> so, so what's the plan, well, Terry? You're doing an you're doing an after show. Yeah, I'll do some sort of after thing, whatever you call it. Okay. No, Terry, <laughs> that'd be bad. After, after thing. Do an after thing. Is after this your pregame to a to a before show? That's my after. Pre, before, yeah. Terry, Come you've on. been on. I can't wrap your head around that one. <laughs> <laughs> you've been on live for like eighteen hours today. I have <laughs> slept. I have I slept. I have I slept. It. I love Even it. Even Paul Allen tried to do a 20, 12 hour stream, and I was already I'm on live before I'm that. A, I'm not a judge. I'm not a judge. No, I wouldn't like to see you in a wig. <laughs> I'll be on your show if you're on, yeah, by the way. Yeah. I love you, Aussies. You guys are fucking fun as shit. Thanks. Well, we, do, we don't take things so seriously like some people. I know it. I know it. So if we're going to do an after show, Terry. Uh, Trish, you've got to be on, okay? Want to chat? Yeah, I don't mind. Everyone's welcome. Except, I don't know. Some Except Aaron. Except Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron's only allowed on if he's not been drinking. Uh, what if oh, I super wait, chat? Wait. He I can, can super chat. Wait, first of all, Aaron can troll not drinking. He's not drunk right now. Oh, isn't he? Nah, I don't think at all. Oh. I don't think he's, you haven't had any beers. Well, then I'll get drunk then. Aaron, have you drunk tonight? No. John. Oh, well, I'll get okay. drunk. And I'll try. And I'll I'll be the. I'll pretend I'm a troll. It's a bit early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I can uh, still troll. Yeah. Aaron, go ahead. You want to start off our final word? We have to do that. Yeah. Uh, I would like wait, to wait, say. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. He has to start it. Why? I said, do we have to do that? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it starts with alphabetical order. I, I, I first. No, no, no. I, I, I like to change it up because I know how Jose does that. So sometimes I do that, and I just picked Aaron. His name happens to start with an A. There's only four people here, and my name starts with A. You can't count. There's nine. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and everyone that's watching the stream can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sean, cheers to you, man. Uh, thank you for accepting my apology, you know, for uh, Wasn't some it ruckus. Wasn't an apology to me. It was an apology to, to said name. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no worries. Uh, I'm actually, I, I don't mean to troll. Um, I am open to all ideas of shape, whatever it is. Um, I like to ask questions, like, think about this shit and uh and i like your show so this was my first chat i don't know why i have such a huge delay i wasn't done yet yeah He's gonna come back. He's gonna come I, back. Aaron, I've got plans for the weekend. Can you move along? 
Yeah. <laughs> you, you, met, like, you just, you actually to... just inspired the new uh, final word minute. <laughs> Terry Davies. Hello. What? What? Th- th- thank you, Aaron. Oi, oi, oi. No, no, I, I, no, I don't, no, I don't go. I go last. Thank you, thank you Aaron. Uh, channel, channel X. Yeah, I'd just like to say um, I like baked beans on toast. Oh, God, you do that stupid shit, too. <laughs> 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 Glenn, uh, Big Blue. No, wait, wait. I wasn't finished. No, because yeah, you are. Uh, Big Blue. No. Say no to the moon tax. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate you being here. Glenn, you're up. Yeah. It's been interesting. I didn't get to say much, but uh, it was interesting. Well, more than welcome to come on any any time or any time you see the link. So, <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate you coming on. Uh, Mandelbot, you, you ready? Oh, wait. <laughs> Someone else want to go until his delay catches up? Oh, no. <laughs> How can you talk with his delay? You've got you've got 15 seconds. Go, quick. Isn't he in the chat? He, okay. he's, I think he's watching the, uh, the watch page. Okay. What? It takes me forever to say anything. Thanks for inviting me in. This was my first time. Thank you for coming on, man. You're more than welcome anytime. Uh, Sean, you're up. Oh, man. What a great show. Aaron has uh, provided uh, some, some much-needed comedic relief tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, I have to say that was, uh, that was the most I've laughed on your show <laughs> in a long time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great show. Um, the, the, uh, I think going over, going over all the, um, geoengineering was great. And, uh, you know, and, you know, blue, blue educated us on what he used to do. That was pretty cool. Uh, it was a good time. Got to learn something new today. It was awesome. Yeah. I'm learning. Oh yeah. <laughs> Travis, your turn. Ether ban, not the curve is the word. <laughs> Come on. That guys, doesn't even guys, rhyme. It, yeah, if you guys haven't seen my uh, parody of uh, Bob the Science Guy, come on. It's it's a really, I, it's so good. <clears throat> it's just so good. <clears throat> I mean, come on. Ether ban, not the curve is the word that rolls off the tongue now. Uh-huh. It's the word. Check it out. Aaron's your new hype man. Your I've got turn. another. I've got uh-huh. another parody. I've got another parody coming up. Don't fear the ether. Hmm. Don't fear atmosphere. That's cool. I like that. Don't fear the ether. Ether. Don't fear. Yeah. Don't fear the atmosphere. Actually. No. Good. Don't what? fear what? the ether. The, a- yeah, the atmosphere yeah. does yeah, not don't. carry the same. Okay, listen. Uh-huh. The atmosphere does not carry the it same. Sucks that I never got to challenge Channel X on his tombstone. <laughs> you had plenty of time. <laughs> if you're up to thank you, Travis. Uh, yeah. I, I had to step out for a little while uh, uh, from before, and I was listening to you were talking about um, climate change and things. Mm-hmm. That's a, that sounds like a good topic to maybe finish up finish up on if anything else was not brought up or like to add to it or anything that that's on the serious side but on the the other side well whatever goes i'll see you in the after show yep and uh terry i'll put, see you down under <laughs> terry has put his link in the chat for the after show uh go join him uh, i'll be over there usually a little bit after i kind of wind down a little bit but uh it's aussie perspective and it is a very enjoyable show so see you over there Channel X, if we crowdfunded your tombstone, would you use it for leaving the part about you being a climate change denier? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) I'm so saving that clip. That was awesome. What? Hey, hey, Terry, Terry, will you you send me the email to your link? 
Thank you. I put, I put it in the so internal chat. Yeah, I know, but I don't. I'm on my phone. I can't get both fucking. What? Uh, oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get an iPhone. Hold on, Aaron. Aaron, hold on. Okay. Okay. Go into the I side got it. chat. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm, I'm leaving. Right. Now, it. copy the it. link. <laughs> hold on, Aaron. Hold on, Aaron. Oh, Aaron's gonna get stuck again. I know it. All right, guys. Uh, uh, I, I have to say, um, tonight, today, uh, blah, blah, tonight's uh, stream was <clears throat> actually really good. I liked it, um, the, the topic. Um, and, I, and I realized something about halfway through. Uh, we had a couple flat earthers, and we didn't talk flat earth. I don't think we talked it once. See? Can be done. Uh, this topic is definitely warrants one more than one stream uh which means yeah if we're gonna be talking about it a lot um a couple things came up towards the end that we didn't really discuss that i do want to get into and um that would be basically the, the carbon taxes that are being paid by us civilians not us i i don't not yet um but there are a lot of places that do um along with the other you know, the other taxes that we already pay that go into basically a climate tax that the state pays and uh, has to regulate. So, again, th this, it, this topic warrants much, much more. So, uh, again, guys, I will see you tomorrow. I do appreciate everyone that was here. Um, I believe Jose is still live. Um, go check him out. I do appreciate everyone that stayed over here and uh, hung out over here and... Uh, Listen to a live panel instead of a recorded panel. Just saying. Just kidding. Not really. I'm for real though. But just kidding. Or am I? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Enjoy. <laughs>